Chicago Land Speedway, home to one of the best finishes in NASCAR, and that was just last year. Well, hello, everyone. Rick Allen with you once again. Jeff Burton will join me in just a few moments. We'll take you all the way through the championship in Miami. Now, just 10 races to go before the playoffs start, and that means that the intensity is definitely ramping up. Every position, every point matters right now, but drivers are on different agendas. There are two organizations that have been dominant in the first half of the season. That's been Joe Gibbs Racing and Team Penske. They've won 15 of the 16 races, so two great teams. We put together another great team here at NBC, our crew chief and driver combination. We've got Steve Letart and Dale Jr. Welcome back, guys. Thank you, Rick. Man, I'm excited to call some races. NASCAR is back on NBC. We're in the middle of the year, so let's give a little review. Kyle Busch started out the season strong, won four races, but the hot shoe over the last eight races has been Martin Trex Jr. He's got four wins. Those two guys are at the top of the heat. Who are the guys, though, that I think can capitalize today as we go on into the second half of the season and race to the playoffs? Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick. Brad Keselowski's won two races on the mile and a half this year. Kevin Harvick, though, has the best average finish of any driver in the series at the mile and a half. You're cheating. You're taking the drivers at the front of the class. How about the drivers at the back of the class trying to make sure they have a seat at the playoffs when the playoffs are set in 10 weeks? And there's no bigger name than the seven-time champ. 83 race wins, Jimmy Johnson never in his entire career has he missed the postseason. Currently sits one point out. No one wants to be a crew member on this race team the year Jimmy Johnson misses the playoffs. And how about this finish a year ago? Kyle Larson in that finished 62 race winless streak. He is just barely in 18 points above Rick. For him to make the playoffs, he needs to start making a run and start getting better finishes. Well, he showed us a great performance a year ago with the slide job. We'll see if that can happen again. It's time for pre-race ceremonies. Let's go trackside now. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as the Associated Firefighters of Illinois Honor Guard present our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Director of Windy City Raceway Ministries, Glenn Spulstra, offers our invocation. Would you pray with me? Lord, we just praise and thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We praise and thank you for this free country that, that you've given us that we could just get together and have this fun afternoon. Lord, we praise you for the men and women that have given their lives that we could be here today. And Lord, we pray for safety today, for the drivers, for the crews, for the fire crews, and for us as fans, Lord, just protect us from the heat and just help us to have a great afternoon. It's in your name, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the gold standard and voice of the Chicago Blackhawks, Jim Cornelison. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket trigger the bombs bursting in air did prove through the night that our flag was still Chicago Land Speedway. 
Here we go. It was a beautiful day, the sun beat down, I had the radio on, I was driving, trees flew by, me and Del were singing, the little Series Racing from Chicago Land Speedway. It is the Camping World 400. Drivers getting strapped into their cars as well as our pit reporters. Let's go down to Parker Clickerwood with more on Alex Bowman. Right, Rick, Alex Bowman had a string of second place finishes about a month ago, lending a lot of people to ask, when is that first win coming? I just talked to Alex and he said, today could be the day, Kelly. Martin Truex Jr. qualified 18th. So what does that mean for the race? Well, crew chief Cole Pern told me they could win this thing or they could finish 20th. He said we've got the speed to run up front. Whether or not we've got the balance right remains to be seen going for his fifth win of 2019, Dave. Last year, Kyle Busch thought he'd get the slide job, but he got the bumper instead. Of course, he returned the favor and went to victory lane. Goes for two in a row at Chicagoland, Marty. Dave, could we see slide job number two? Well, Kyle Larson would love to see that, but on the other end of it with the win. But he told me he's more focused on the playoff cut line. They're just 18 points above that playoff cut line with 10 races left to go. He said this is one of our best shots to get a win left in the regular season, Rick. Yeah, Marty. You know, Junior spent time with Kyle and Kyle out on the racetrack talking through that and both drivers after the slide job took place thought they were going to win. I mean Kyle Larson said if the guy's in the wall I'm going to beat him back to the finish line and of course Kyle Busch he used the wall to slow that momentum down so that he could get around Kyle Larson to eventually get the win. What an incredible story that finish was Junior. Yeah Rick I was really surprised by some of the things I learned I didn't know that Kyle Busch knew Larson was going to take that slide job attempt into turn one. That was surprised me that he saw that coming even before we saw it coming. Those guys are just so good knowing each other and knowing each other's instincts on the racetrack. I have been surprised this weekend by the fact that we haven't seen a lot of speed out of Martin Shrex Jr. or Kyle Busch in either of the practices or qualifying. Does that mean that they're not two of the favorites for this race? Of course not. Those two guys are definitely a favorite any racetrack we go to. Don't believe it, Rick. I go back and look at the races that these two gentlemen have won, and it didn't show up in practice. It showed up when the green flag fell. I think the same thing could happen today. We'll see if they found that magic that's brought them both to victory lane four times this year. We have definitely seen a lot of fun in practice. They were racing during practice. We can't imagine what's going to happen when the green flag flies. And the engines are fired up, which takes place right now. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Camping World President, Brent Moody. Okay, NASCAR fans, let's get this started. Drivers, start your engines. to our ears. That's right, the engines are fired. We're ready for 400 miles in Chicago. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. And by Credit One Bank. 
the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. This is not over yet. Larson to the bottom of the track. Bad job. Trying to take the lead away. Bad job. Larson has the advantage. Here comes the 18. He puts the ball oh in the back of him. Kyle Busch will win. <laughs> wow. I don't know what y'all are whining about, but if you don't like that kind of racing, don't even watch. All right, cars are rolling. Let's take a look at today's starting grid brought to you by KFC. Up front, winning the pole, Austin Dillon. Third pole in 2019, still hasn't been to victory lane, though. Kevin Harvick, same situation. He's on the front row, but has not been to victory lane. Henrik and Johnson will make up row two. Daniel Henrik, best starting position for him. Yeah, row three, we see Kurt Busch and Glenn Boyer back in row four. How about Michael McDowell, second best ever career start up there in the fourth row. And Alex Bowman, a lot of talk about that 88 is perhaps a favorite today. Row five, Denny Hamlin. We talked about Gibbs and how strong they are. He may be the best Gibbs car here this weekend. Row six, we've got Brad Keselowski, a guy I think might win this race. Great strength with this season at the mile and a half. Row seven, Kyle Larson. Can he get on that top side and do it like nobody else today? It amazed me when he told you about that move. So yeah. candid. Just Absolutely. shocked me how they talked about it. Look at row nine. These guys here are the hot hands in the series so far this season. Kyle Busch, Mark Trix Jr. Mentioned hot hands, Joey Logano, with that dominating win from the pole at Michigan just a few weeks ago. It seemed like those Penske cars are better at the bigger tracks. Interesting to see how they run here today. Jones there in row 11. Paul Menard back in row 12. I think Adam Paul just you know looking for a little bit of a turn this season. Mentioned the Penske cars. That 21 has an affiliation. Just looking for a little more yet to connect the dogs. See here, Chris Buescher in row four, row 15. Corey LaJoy, unfortunately, has to go to the rear. Matty D, after that great run at Sonoma, can he continue that momentum? I think an emotional weekend for him. You saw the emotion after the race. A fan favorite. Everybody was cheering him on to drive up into the top five, passing some of the biggest teams and the biggest names. But now we're back to the ovals. Can that continue here in Chicago? We're going to have to see. All right, Steve, we've seen the lineup. We know what this racetrack is like. Break down the race for us. I'll tell you what this racetrack is like. It's old. The pavement has never been redone. It's original since 2001. So it's old, it's bumpy, it's rough. A one and a half mile trial with 267 laps, 400 miles. We break it down into stages, Junior. 80 laps for stage one, 80 laps for stage two. That leaves a little bit longer final stage, 107 laps. And you could go 60 laps on fuel. The drivers in this heat, though, are going to have to stay focused on those long green flag runs. Out in front of the field, official pace car for today's Camping World 400 is 2019 Toyota Camry XSE. And a little further out in front of that pace car is Joyride with Jeff. Yep, that's right, the mayor. He's joined by Chicago Fire's Taylor Kenny. Well, Taylor, thanks for riding along with us, man. Yeah, it's Chicago Fire fame. What do you think about this so far? I don't, I don't know whether if I... Uh... I feel like a sardine or a you know, kid at Christmas. This is pretty great. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take off right here and run a little hot lap. Yeah. I want you to tell everybody what yeah. you're feeling. Holy Anna. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> oh, we're going to beat Villapoto in his Camry. Good gosh. My foot up on the, on the, <laughs> crotch the whole time. <laughs> man, it's so hard to explain how fast that is, isn't it's, it? It's, it's, isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I was like, for anyone at home, I'm. Yeah, I was pretty jammed up the whole time. Did well, you did you ever think it would feel and sound uh, like that? No, it's way faster than my mom's station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That was, yeah, that was incredible. That was that was like a yeah. I didn't know a car well, could do that. Man, I appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, thank you We're going to get it back up to Rick and Steve and Dale Jr. Have yeah. a great race here. <laughs> <So> I, <laughs> you love the emotion. You see that. I mean, 
Taylor was is having a great time. You may know him better as Kelly Severide from obviously Chicago Fire. What a what a great thrill ride that had to be for him. Let's go back to Pit Road and Parker. And Rick, I'm here in the 20 pit of Eric Jones. I was just talking a little bit ago. You know, there's a ton of rumors circulating about what's going to happen next year. He's in a contract year. He told me I'm focused on one thing, winning a race, which means I will be in the playoffs, Kelly. Clint Boyer says success is measured by winning, something he has yet to do this year. And it's been a rough couple of weeks for this 14 team. Crew chief Mike Bugaravich told me they got to get the wheels back on this program. The problem has been lack of execution. The goal today to have a nice, clean race, collect some stage points, and improve their playoff position, Dave. Kelly, I'm in Chase Elliott's pit, and I talked to his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, this morning about where they qualified, and he pointed to a scoring monitor. They're down here qualifying in 13th position. He pointed to kind of a sweet spot right in the middle from about 9th down to about 19th position, where those guys might be really well off in terms of the balance they put on their cars this weekend. We'll see how Chase's turns out, Marty. Paul Wolf and Brad Kozlowski have heard the talk that they've maybe lost a little bit to Gibbs at the mile and a half. He told me today that's not the case. They have a little bit to prove. We'll see if they can get mile and a half win number three today, Rick. And looking for more playoff points. That's what the guys that are already locked into the playoffs are searching for. And then there are those that are looking for the points just to make sure that their season is extended and they get into the playoffs and have a chance for the championship. Up to the gears they go. The Camping World 400 underway. Not a great restart by Kevin Harvick. Austin Dillon easily into the lead down into turn one. Daniel Hemrick in the number eight. He's making a move here on the inside of Harvick to the back straightaway. Austin's going to go down and try to block that run. Three wide fighting for third right now. The one of Kurt Busch on the bottom of the racetrack. Kevin Harvick right outside of him. Austin Dillon holding the lead as they go through three and four. Three wide by three wide by three wide all the way back. Down to the apron they go, searching for space around this racetrack. Four wide. wide now as they come into one. Kyle Larson on that top, making up a lot of ground out there on the outside. Alex Bowman down the back straightaway. He's got the momentum, picking off a couple spots right there. Alex going to side draft. He's getting side draft. Kurt Busch trying to stay tight on that inside. Larson's free, man. He's picking up a lot of ground on those guys in front of him. Danny Hamlin saw the success the 42 had, so he jumped to the top lane outside the 88. That blue car of Alex Bowman, that orange Oscar Mayer car, Ryan Newman behind him. Still fighting for positions. Alex Bowman in the 88 on the inside of the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Kurt Those Bush two finally, fighting. Yeah, Kurt Busch finally gets back in line after losing a few spots on that bottom. So looking like right now these restarts, the bottom's pretty tough to maintain your position. Kurt looking at chasing the car off the racetrack over the bumps. He's having a little trouble the balance of that one car. That is a big slide right there in the middle of traffic. It's going to cost him as he goes up and slows down. Look at the 22 taking advantage of him. Air off the spoiler there. You saw Brad Keselowski get right up on the back bumper of the 18 of Kyle Busch, and it got him loose. He did. He got him loose down straight away. Second place battle here, Jimmy Johnson. We wondered. We talked about it. Looked great in practice. Qualified well. Would it continue to the race? So far, I've seen it. He's up front. He's battling in that 48 car as we ride on board with Kevin Harvick and the Jimmy Johns on board. Saw that run that Kevin Harvick had on Daniel Hemrick as he was closing in on him, got right up to the back bumper, now looks to the outside, trying to take third away from Hemrick as the 48 goes to the high line, looking as he's going to try to challenge for the lead. The middle groove and the top are already effective. We're only just a couple laps into this race, and guys are using this high line. This is going to be an awesome Awesome race today if that's the case. Here comes Ryan Blaney in the 12. He's working his way up into the top four now. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson Jimmy's closing in on that back bumper of Austin Dillon. Austin's been running low. Will he move up a little bit and try to defend that position? He's going to stay at the bottom. Harvick's yeah. going to try to take second away from Jimmy Johnson. That was like a double block. He had both lanes getting into turn he one. He's just trying to stay in front of these guys and take their air. He wants to run wherever the, wherever the run's coming from. He wants to be in front of it. Jimmy's trying to get that momentum on the high side to get a run down this front straightaway. Look at him gain on that three car up front. Not going to have a strong enough run here to make a move. This is awesome. <laughs> 
it, it amazes me how well the three has blocked these runs. I thought as wide as this track was going to be, the 48 would have an opportunity. He climbs the hill again, as you mentioned, gets in the gas before or stays in the gas longer, trying to get that momentum. And the momentum shows up, but he has just nowhere to go with it at the end of the straightaway. Austin said he was worried whether his car was trimmed out or whether they had good downforce in it. Looks like they've come with a pretty good package. Look at Jimmy Johnson, who almost gets to the outside. He's going to the inside now. Slingshot move. Here comes Jimmy Johnson to the inside of Austin Dillon for the lead. For years, Rick, Jimmy Johnson taking the lead was no big deal. He's won 83 races, seven championships. He's only led 68 laps this year, a career-long winless streak. Can he complete the pass? He did. I didn't think he's going to get it done. Here comes Jimmy the three Johnson with the run. out front. Now, Austin Dillon to the inside. He'll try to take it back. That's what amazes me. You clear them, the leaders are not gone. They overtake Kevin Harvick's is not so fast. Working the wall. As those two are side by side, here comes the four of Harvick. That lap led by Jimmy Johnson. Austin Dillon running second, Harvick third. Well, those guys running side by side, they gave the four car a big run. Look at Blaney sneaking into the battle here. He's on the bottom. Great corner for Jimmy Johnson. He might be able to break free of the three car. Oh, I don't think Austin's going to let him go. Great side draft by Austin Dillon. And now Dillon. Oh, oh a little wobble by, by the three. Yeah, Austin Dillon got loose. Has to check back. A new leader, 48. And guys, that aggression we saw at Jimmy Johnson talking to his crew chief, Kevin Mender, and he said, you know, that's been the biggest adjustment for Jimmy in this package, how aggressive he has to race. They said basically everything about racing etiquette he knew in the old package is gone away. It's all about aggression now, Marty. Parker, this is fantastic racing, just 10 laps into the race in Chicagoland. You can see off turns three and four, right where the drivers are right now, there is rain in the area, so there's a little bit of sense of urgency down here. And Junior, I'm reminded of what Kevin Harvick told us in the pre-race show track position is keen you can see these guys fighting for a tooth and nail here early in the race absolutely all the top eight cars are winless this year all these guys are trying to win a race caution is out i'm sure it's weather and we heard it from the spotter i'm sure it's weather sure enough it is that was spotter Lightning. earl barbin with the 48. man that was intense guys well, how about jimmy johnson it it shouldn't surprise us but it was pretty exciting watching Jimmy Johnson get in front of the field once again. I bet he was smiling. I mean, he had a lot to be happy about for a while now. You know he's been having a good time out front, being able to have a car that can do that. He struggled to really get a car competitive enough to do what he wants it to do. And he's had to adjust his style, like he said, but uh, pretty impressive race car that they've got this weekend. Dale, I had the opportunity to work with Jeff Gordon in the second half of his career where we had some down years and he came back and I'm going to tell you a champion when you gave him a car instant instant energy from the race car when he had a car that could win he was a different guy Jimmy Johnson I know will be that same way no one hates losing more than him he's used to winning I think this is the day we've all been waiting for can they win I don't know but I'm going to be excited to watch him try to win with what looks like currently a winning race car Remember, if he does win, he's one win away from tying Darrell Waltrip and Bobby Allison on the all-time wins list at 84 wins. Well, might as well come here, one of the few tracks he's never won a cup race at. I mean, that would only make sense. He dominates the stats at every other racetrack we go to. Might as well check the box at Chicago Land. Well, he's he leads all of the drivers in laps led here, but surprisingly enough, he's still winless. He has not won at this racetrack. Instantly enough, or interestingly enough, won the Xfinity race here. It's only real Xfinity win. Yeah, so. yeah. Not a not a real, you know, not a real strong background in Xfinity, but did win here. That's a difficult sight to see when they bring them on to pit road. Again, haven't really seen any precipitation. We know, as Marty had mentioned, that there is there are storms all around this racetrack right now. And they're going to bring the cars onto pit road. 12 laps complete. Still a lot to go in stage one. Still a lot to go in this race. There you saw it, that lightning strike. That's the reason they're on pit road. It's been a lightning storm on the racetrack as well to start this one in Chicago. Monster Energy Cup Series racing about to get back underway here in Chicagoland Speedway. The track is dry, the teams are ready. The cars are on the track. Pit road is open if anybody wants to take that left turn, and it looks as though a few do. 
Jimmy Johnson's going to stay out as is Austin Dillon but quite a few are making their way onto pit road now. Led by Kevin Harvick Ryan Blaney Kyle Larson down there as well. Dave. Kyle Busch is going to take this opportunity to get four fresh Goodyear tires and bring it onto pit road. Also have a chassis adjustment. Marty changes a lot in conditions here since they were last on track. Kevin Harvick here on pit road. Rodney Childers said if we pit we will come in this next time. And of course they did come down pit road. And I'm not surprised here Steve. I don't know what you think. Also uh, a couple of other cars Ryan Blaney pitting here as well as his teammate uh, Brad Kozlowski and Elliot or um, Chase Elliott. So I don't know Steve here we are 14 laps in you have seven sets of tires laying. Do you agree with the split decision to come to pit road here. I have concern. I believe I would have stayed on the racetrack. I'm shocked that many cars came to pit road. You see a little slow stop here on the nine. The start of the race for the nine was not very good. He didn't move forward like we would expect. So maybe they're doing some extra work. Steve what do they work on there in the left front usually if the tire changer gets in there a mechanic. It looks like they're either adjusting a shock or a bump stop something in that left front corner. You see right there a pair of pliers in his hand. So Packer basically spaces the car up is all you need to know makes the car run higher and lower. They look like he pulled some out. Maybe they feel like they're is too high but there's pieces you see the pieces sitting on the ground so yeah they're trying to lower that left front corner of the nine car probably make it a little bit more aerodynamic a little more downforce but Marty back to your point you know I, I, I'm more concerned about tire count you know I mentioned the weather but as the radar kind of continues to run everything breaks up this is a long race you're only 10 laps in or 14 laps in and you've already used a set of tires so I was a fan of staying on the racetrack but then again now I like the new tires deal because not many guys stayed on the racetrack. How about the move by Paul Menard and his team they came down pit road just got fuel only do you like that he gains a lot of track position there he gains track position and he's the first guy off pit road with that fuel cell full which means the guys in front of him is does run green he can run a little longer maybe catch a yellow we saw Mike Lynette yesterday catch a real timely yellow change his race. Well, NASCAR Drive is your live race day companion. You can select up to eight different cameras, or you can watch four at one time with a multi-camera view. All you have to do is visit nascar.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app today. And once again, the nine of Chase Elliott back on pit road. Looks like they're going to fuel it up, top it off. Rick's playing in that first segment about being very tight. So those adjustments Steve was talking about that you came in for that first time to get adjustments and then you're at the back anyway Steve. So why not pit and fill it up with fuel right. Yeah absolutely. I think uh, at 65 to go Marty I mean, a couple of yellows they may not have to stop again. And that's what I was just going to bring up Steve. You look at the case of Kevin Harvick restarting ninth. He'll have 11 lap fresher tires and those in front of him. And if they get a caution and maybe even without one they could possibly make it to the end of this stage. So maybe a good move by those nine cars who came to pit road. So already a little strategy being played by the drivers going off of what took place to start this race which was rain and weather delaying it by a little over three hours and 18 minutes for 15 laps in Rick and my calculator battery is already running low with what these crew <laughs> chiefs are trying to work out coming up on lap 16 of this race it's Jimmy Johnson on the outside Austin Dillon on the inside back to racing at Chicago Lane. Daniel Hemrick in the eighth, right behind his teammate Austin Dillon. Those two on the low side of the racetrack, and then teammates on the high side. Joe Logano, Joe Logano in the wall just a little bit with Kyle Busch on the back straightaway, getting a little push. And Austin Dillon, he almost cleared Jimmy Johnson. Oh. Is that four wide or five wide coming out of turn four? Four wide right now. Joe Logano's from the top all the way to the bottom of the racetrack, next to the apron, next to the grass. Almost in the grass, just shortening that front straightaway up as much as he can. And we pick up where we left off. A battle for the lead once again. Austin Dillon on the inside. Jimmy Johnson on the outside, side by side for the lead. It's going to be short-lived, the battle between the three and the 48, because Kevin Harvick right behind the three on brand new Goodyear tires. He's going to easily pull to the bottom of the racetrack. I think he's going to have the momentum. And Alex Bowman in that 88 car, he went way to the top in three and four. Looked like he was going to try to make it three wide with Jimmy Johnson. Just maybe just trying to stay out from behind beneath him, behind him, trying to get air in front of his car, get the downforce on it. Austin Dillon running the line that Kevin Harvick wants to run. Let's take Taking a look that at, air away from the nose. Let's take a look at that replay real quick with the 18 and the 22 here. 
the 18 car riding on top of uh, the roof of the 18 car bus trying to push the 22. Both of them into the fence just a little bit down that back straightaway. Shouldn't be too bad. Look at the damage though to the 22 car on the right rear quarter panel. They want to work on that. Battle for the lead. Kevin Harvick to the bottom of Austin Dillon. You're seeing here, even with those new tires, we were talking about a lot of wide open throttle, but it just seems like you make a more efficient corner runs right around the bottom, Junior. Jim John side panner giving us a few here. And Austin the Dillon. Tires are going to get out front. But here comes the 48 of Jimmy Johnson fighting back on the inside, trying to take that second spot back. You saw Blaney jump up behind Austin Dillon, then immediately changed his mind and went behind the 48. Those are decisions that these drivers are going to have to make all day. Which line do they think is going to advance? And Jeff, I talked to Kevin Harvick, and look at that gaggle right behind him, trying to chase him down before he got in the car. I said, do you have any idea what the racetrack is going to do? And he said, nope, we're all on this learning curve together. He said, we've never in this new package set up for warm, slick conditions, and then race them in cooler conditions. So we're all learning as we go along, but what we have learned, those fresh tires mean something. Yeah, look at William Byron in that 24 car. He did pit, he has fresh tires, remember. He started in the back of the field. He is working himself all the way up to eight. Now they did an engine change, so he had to start at the back of the pack, and already he's up into the top ten. Those fresh tires have helped Kevin Harvick get into the lead, but he's not driving away from these guys. Got a change for second place there. Blaney getting by Jimmy Johnson. Also on fresh tires or fresher tires, pitted with Kevin Harvick. Behind them, you see that white car, that's Brad Kozlowski. The 22, the yellow car behind him is teammate Joey Logano. Uh, Joey Logano lost the nose right there underneath the three car of Austin. Dillon, it's gonna cost him a couple positions here. He's trying to protect. William Byron dives below. Yeah, William Byron dives below the 22. What a move, an aggressive move by William Byron, taking spots away again. Now he's gonna try to get by his teammate, the 88 of Alex Bowman. Watch Joey lose the nose here. Dirty air from the two car in front of him. Now from the three car, he just can't get to the throttle there. He's waiting, waiting, waiting on the front end of the car. These guys are just in the gas going by him. Right, he lost the nose again right there, almost into the wall. Here comes the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Joey's car is not driving anywhere near like he needs it to. Oh man, but he's gonna block. Closer. He goes to the bottom of the track to stay in front of the 11. Morning. TJ Major's getting a workout on the radio. He's a spotter for Joey Logano. And it's almost like he's at Daytona a week early, calling nonstop play by play of what Joey is doing. And remember, Joey told us in the rain delay, I think this rain delay is going to hurt us. We need it to be hot and slick. And Parker mentioned it's cooled down 50 degrees in terms of track temperature. I think that's what's happening with the 22. He's getting some great runs on these guys. I think his runs are so big that he's running up behind them so quickly in the corners, maybe. Hey, Kyle, Bush, Bush, Kyle Bush in the wall behind him. Kyle he Bush was a, with an issue. Yeah, he was in the wall hard in the middle of three and four. Slow on the racetrack, slowing down. Hard contact with the right side. Yeah. Let's take a look and see what happened here. Well, down that three and four end of the racetrack, the bumpy end of the racetrack. We're on board the Snoko onboard camera here. Tight, tight, tight. Yeah. Wouldn't turn, would it? Got the wall pretty good. Talking to these drivers, they are surprised sometimes at how dirty the area is in traffic. It sneaks up on them. We knew it was tight because riding in that in car, the wheel never turned to the right. He constantly kept the wheel to the left, meaning the front end wasn't turning. Sometimes you'll get in the wall because you can't turn it because you're too loose. In that case, you never saw him go back to the right, so it just got really tight. Wonder if getting in the back, getting in the wall back straightaway has bothered the aerodynamics on that car. Hard to say. Dave? Just listening to Kyle now report, hit a bump, put me into the fence. The car was tight. It wouldn't turn coming off the corners, but that bump is what really threw it off. Uh, spotter Tony Hirschman said, I see a little bit of fuzz, maybe a little bit of tire rub, but for now it's Kyle's choice. The team is ready if he wants to bring it in. Those bumps, Junior, we've talked about it. They can upset a car. 
Now, I'm just worried. I, if, if I've got damage like that, I'm running the top, man. If that right front tire goes down, I want to get into that wall gracefully and easily. If I'm running the bottom and I lose the right front tire, I could get into that wall a little bit too hard. So if I've got that kind of damage, I want to get up there against that fence and run that high line in case we have a tire go down. I talked to Kyle Busch this morning, guys, and he told me his car was terrible over the bumps. That was their biggest problem. They could not find a way of practice to get it to ride the bump smoothly. That's exactly what happened to him. So don't mean, guys, this is the story of 2019. Dale Jr. mentioned it. Kevin Harvick has driven up and he's taken the lead, but he's not disappearing. Ryan Blaney, basically four tenths of a second behind him, using that draft, using that little bit of pull, that help of the aerodynamics to just stay in touch. Luckily here at Chicagoland, it's wide enough when they go down the corner, look, two different lanes, then they get on the straightaway, they get back in line again. Yeah, uh, we've seen this package be able to keep the cars closer together, be able to keep the second, third place guy within striking distance of the leader. But there is a lot of off throttle here. So this tells me that Blaney has a good race car. Marty. Hey, Junior, both Ryan Blaney and Kevin Harvick reporting that their cars are free. And a lot of times when it rains and it washes all the rubber off the racetrack, they call it a green racetrack. And the, the drivers will say it's free immediately after that run. The top two guys saying that, but see how critical is it? Because you know the racetrack's going to change to keep up with that throughout this evening. Well, normally in, in years past, a green racetrack, I would have some concern about tire wear, but talked to Goodyear this weekend, and they said with a higher downforce, the tires really have been pretty good. So now I think it's just what Marty said. It's all about adjusting. Continue to adjust as Brad Kozlowski gives William Byron a shot going into the corner. Kelly. Well, that's because William Byron had just made the move to get around Brad Keselowski with this new package. Everyone emphasizes the importance of these restarts, and that's one of the things that William Byron has said he needs the most work on. Well, look what he's done this race. Starting from the back, he made up 16 positions in the first 11 laps. They came to pit road, no adjustments, just some fresh Goodyear tires, and now cracked into the top four. So these restarts certainly working out for this young man. Resurgence of Hendrick Motorsports, and it's come with the youth. Chase Elliott getting a win already this season. Alex Bowman running very strong, as is right now we see William Byron. You just mentioned Chase Elliott with that win early in the season. Well, right now we saw him on pit road making changes to that car. He has only driven up to 24th, so he is struggling right now. Look right behind him also, Daniel Hemrick qualified very, very well, started in front of this pack. And he is all the way back in the 25th, so both of these guys are struggling. The one Hendrick Motorsports driver that's not struggling today has led laps already. Jimmy Johnson, the seventh time, running right now third. Kevin Harvick leading the Camping World 400 from Chicagoland Speedway. And Steve, I know last week you were on with the bag man and Pete Pistoni during the morning drive on Sirius XM. That's Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern. Dale Jarrett's going to be the guest this week, and obviously Dale hasn't worked enough today. <laughs> he's, been, he's been on TV for about four hours already today, but uh, we'll keep it going. But a lot of fun with those guys. Uh, so much fun. You want to know the pulse of the fan base. That showed the perfect show to be a part of. You know, the call-ins. They always have a comment, and uh, Pete and Mike are just so much fun to just joke around with, talk about the sport. Let's go to Parker. The guys are looking at Jimmy Johnson there, and I think this is a really impressive run. Remember, he stayed out there when a lot of the others pitted, especially Kevin Harvick and Blaney went by him. But he's only falling back a little bit, and he's consistently turning lap times of the top three there, even sometimes having the fastest lap times on the track. And if you compare it to his teammate who stayed out as well, Alex Bowman, he's falling all the way to 12. So I think this is the mark of a very strong car there for the 48. All he's reported inside, he's just a little freer in one and two and tight in traffic. I don't know if you guys agree, but this is strong. I think that shows a little speed, how much speed they have. Well, Parker, not just strong, but you know what they have right now? When you're standing in their pits, they're going to have one more set of those beautiful, fresh Goodyear tires. And I'm telling you, it might not be the best storyline now, and it might seem like, why are we worried about that with so much to go in the race? But trust me, this is a long race. At some point, Dave, that fresh set of tires is gonna help this 48. And Steve, let's check in on the 18 of Kyle Busch, last year's winner here at Chicago Land Speedway. The situation isn't the worst it could be, but it's not great either, listen. Right 
So Kyle resolving that he's got to drive it maybe to the stage end. They did what come in and fuel up, so he's got enough Sunoco fuel in the car. But then, Steve, the shaping of that right side, what can the team do when they take it away from the tire to make it right? Well, you heard right there, Kyle doesn't even think it's as much the outside of the car. What he's talking about is the panels underneath that you see on the left. That was him in the wall. You know, they don't seal to the outside of the car, meaning air is going places it shouldn't go. That's his concern. Let's take the tires off, tape those up the best we can. I love Adam Stevens, though, Jr. How about that, right? He is the leader of the ship. He tells Kyle Busch how it is, and Kyle responded. I think that's why this is such a good duo. And yeah, these are the kind of races, though, that Kyle Busch sort of finds himself in often, and he comes back and finds a way to be in the mix at the end, so I wasn't counting him out at all just now. Also, Logano has a little right side damage. Both of them, once they get that fixed, would improve their cars, and I'll see them back in the back in the front. You're not ready to take them out of your fantasy no, lineup yet? No, they're, <laughs> they're in there. I'm leaving. Kyle running 20th right now. You have Denny Hamlin in the 11, chasing down the three of Austin Dillon. And we were a little bit worried about Austin Dillon and how his car was handling at the start of the race, but based on practice, we all thought Denny Hamlin had a really good car coming into this race, and he's, Austin's been able to keep Denny behind him. So, again, I think these cooling conditions have helped that car, given a little more grip. Seems to be heading in the right direction, Dave. And I asked his crew chief, Chris Gabehart, this morning if our assessment, the one you talked about, that the 11 was one of the good ones, was right. He said, in practice, it's a little harder to tell these days, but I think we're one of the top runners. Remember, Hamlin came down pit road during that first opportunity, took on four tires and fuel. I think what's most impressive is that Austin didn't. Austin has not taken tires. He's racing around cars that have. It's only a few laps. But he's been able to hold on. Look here. He's fighting off that 11 car down the back straightaway. All right. You said fighting off the 11. Burton said fighting off the 11. Take me inside the 11. What's Denny Hamlin's path past this three car? Well, he just wants to go where the three's not. So that three car has a giant spoiler on it. Running in behind that three car is going to create dirty air. Gonna, you're going to lose air on the front of the car. It's not going to turn. He ran the high side in three and four to get this run he's got right now down the back straightaway. It's not quite big enough run to make a move now. He's going to go to the bottom, force the three to the top. Probably likely won't clear him. Well, he just might. The three's going to have a little bit of a run here. Will he fight for that position? Looks like he's going to fall in behind Denny. Denny, make, Denny takes the spot. With Denny's tires, he's probably going to drive away from the three. Austin's not going to fight it. Marty. And Junior also kind of giving up that spot because Danny Stockman has told him in the next lap or so they'll be coming to pit road. But I think it's impressive, and you mentioned it, what Austin Dillon has done without stopping so far in this race. He's hanging in there, running seventh right now, but they'll be coming to pit road fairly soon. I'm sure Jimmy Johnson would be soon as well. So the real question I have is with these cars that need tires and fuel first, when they come to pit road, will that drag the other group in? Even though they have better tires and more fuel, can they afford to not pit? That's going to be a strategy decision that we're going to have to see what the crew chiefs make. Let's listen in what Kevin Harvick's thinking. We'll run this out as far as we can, do a gas only right at the end. Make it to this stage break. Probably about four to go, five to go. There's your answer, Steve. There you go. So Kevin Harvick, Roddy Childers, they are going to stay on the racetrack and do a short pit stop gas only to save a set of tires as well. Parker. Guys, the 88 of Alex Bowman pits outside the top 10. It's going to be four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. He's been really tight inside that 88 car, just cannot get it to turn. Started in the top five here when they stayed out, but has fallen outside the top 10, trying to salvage this stage. Steve, interesting strategy here. It seems like one of the guys that stayed out didn't come in for those fresh tires of the five that were out there. Alex Bowman comes to pit road almost the middle of this stage. I think that's what they're going to have to do. This is almost 50 laps on that set of tires. You need to come get your fresh tires and try to make it up by splitting this run kind of in half, having the best tires, the best lap time. And now that we heard what Roddy Childers is going to do, so having all these other cars. So now you have to figure out, well, how? I know what the four is going to do. How can I try to gain on those guys? And I like the idea of putting tires on early. Austin Dillon's decided to come to pit road before he loses too much more track position to these guys. Come in here and get these new tires. Get back out on the racetrack. How long will Jimmy Johnson stay out though? That's the question. He's still running up in the top three. Yeah, I think if you're not losing that much track position, you can stay out there a little bit longer. Austin Dillon had fallen all the way to eighth, ninth place. Marty. And I think we're going to see this all day long when someone comes to pit road. you got to realize who you're racing against, right? So the 88 game, 
And then Danny Stockman called Austin Dillon down pit road. He said the tire fall off just too much for us to stay out much longer. Austin has been a little bit too free. They're going to fix that with air pressure for fresh Goodyear tires. That'll certainly help the lap time as well. The pole sitter leaves pit road, Dave. And here's part of the answer to Steve's question. Matt McCall likes the idea of coming down and following suit with these other drivers. Steve, maybe one reason is because Kern is reporting that they smacked the track too much on the lower air and it shoots up the track. They'll make a change there. Change four Goodyear tires and Asinoco fuel. Parker. You have Daniel Hemrick here in the pits. He had pitted earlier. Now that and now there's now the racetrack of that car is four Goodyear tires and Asinoco fuel. Now the wave has come, a few at a time, not a huge pack. We see Brad Kozlowski's on pit road as well as Eric Amarola Marty. That's interesting, see Brad Kozlowski, the first of those that pitted at lap 14 to come back down pit road. They'll put on four fresh Goodyear tires. So it shows you how important Paul Wolf thinks tires is. They're going to come down pit road. We'll see if the four sticks with that strategy of fuel only, Dave. Bottom of the screen, Eric Almarola is in in the 10 car. They won't make any chassis adjustments, but they'll change tires and add Sunoco fuel. There may be an air pressure adjustment in there. He said it will not go through the bumps. It's really bad. Dan, you called it. The three fell back in traffic. The lap times go slower when you're back. The 48 has kept that track position. You see on the pylon, third position consistently running top five lap times. That's opening the playbook for Kevin Mentoring on top of that pit box. Much like Kevin Harvick, the leader, that playbook wide open for Rodney Childers. Harvick and Blaney running first and second in their Fords. Kevin Harvick, again, the big story to start 2019. He has not been to victory lane. Could this be the answer coming to Chicago lane? And bad news for the eights, uncontrolled tire for Daniel Hemrick. He'll have to come in to serve that penalty. That's a huge penalty because he had fallen so far back, you know, and he was not running well, so he's going to, the leader's going to be that much further ahead. It's going to be put him multiple laps down here. Drew Logano, followed by Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson very busy over the last two days. He had two cup practices and then qualifying and then followed that up with two races last night on the dirt track where he won one it was dq and then he won the next one we'll be right back the official app of nascar puts race coverage and in-car cameras right at your fingertips search nascar in your app store or visit nascar.com slash mobile while we were away the 48 of jimmy johnson came to pit road parker Right, Rick, and he had an interesting strategy. He only took right side tires with 23 laps to go in the stage. So, Steve, I'll send this one to you. What's the strategy there? Is it time over distance, track position, essentially? I think it's track position. Looking at the end of the stage, Kevin Mentoring, Dale, you and I talked about at the top of the show. This car has to make the playoffs. Their current path is by points. I'm not saying they can't win. That looks like a strategy call to me to try to get some points for the 48 mark. Meanwhile, Steve, for the leader, Kevin Harvick, who's led all but 10 laps early here in this race. Uh, maybe a strategy change for he and Rodney Childers. Take a listen on the radio. I really feel like we're just set with seven to go for four tires on to just stay out and just stay to break. That way we can control the race. I just don't want to give up control at the stage of break. I feel like most of them I do that anyway. Remember, they were thinking fuel only with a couple of laps left. So, Steve, that's been a big issue for Kevin Harvick this year, and he mentioned it. We cannot give up control of races any longer. They have control now. That's Rodney Childers thinking. That's how we keep control of the race. Perfect example. Your pit strategy cannot be chiseled into stone. You must have, you have to race the racetrack and your competitors. Rodney Childers says, I think I know what everyone else is going to do. I had a plan. Doesn't look like the best plan. I'm going to adjust. I love that call by Rodney. I like what you're thinking. Stay control of the race and try to be the leader. Strategy written in pencil, then, is that what you're saying? Yeah, chalk maybe. Race is easy. <laughs> 43 car above the Wallace. He had a penalty this last round of pit stops. You can see trying to make that adjustment and oh. just didn't get it out of the rear window. So that's removing equipment from the box. Left. Come in and serve that penalty. Just couldn't get it out. God, he tried. You saw the dejection on his face. Yeah. That's a tough situation. But again, can't leave the pit box with any equipment. Kevin Harvick still out front. Ryan Blaney two seconds behind him. We heard from Bubba Wallace during that rain delay. Really opened up about his emotions and 
things that he's struggling with. I think Kyle Petty put it perfectly. He's he's human. <laughs> he's he's not some type of uh, superhero that drives race cars. He's definitely human. Denny Hamlin, the 11 just in front of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. And again, Johnson is a lap down after coming to pit road. He should be able to make it to the end of the stage. Everyone else potentially will have to come to pit road. After stopping on lap 14. Now, Steve, would anybody gamble and see if they could stretch it that far? It seems like a long way. I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say from everything I've heard and everything I've asked in the garage here, it seems like it's a long ways to go. But I think there's a lot of uncertainty at this race. How much time will be spent at wide open throttle? So I, I think it'd be a big gamble early. But hey, some teams I think are, are willing to make those games. We're going to have to see, Dave. The 11 team has been talking about it. Let's see what they're going to do. Here we will have to pit again. You don't think I can just back off the stage? Can I make it? So that's the story for the 11. If we can transition to the 18, it's a little bit different for Kyle Busch. Remember, he got into the wall earlier, and the 18 can make it to the end if he, quote unquote, saves hard. That comes from Adam Stevens' crew chief. So they're going to try to do that, stay out at the stage break, Steve. They'll pick up a lap at that point with the fresh tires, but he's got to save hard right now. A lot of action, 68 laps already. Split strategy. The 18 in the wall trying to save it. Look at the top, top. I don't know if it's better, you know what I mean, shorter distance or what he's doing up top of throttle. It's up to you. That's, so, that's an interesting conversation, isn't it, Steve? Like, where do you want to run? Trying to save fuel. Look at the throttle. Even down the straightaway, he's not full throttle. He's trying to carry momentum around the corner. He's half throttle, roughly just over half throttle. Let's watch what he does down the back straightaway. He's full throttle now. Trying to use that car in front of him for a little draft. Now he's half throttle, lifting very early. Now he's completely out of the gas. Just never trying to be you know in that I mean? throttle anymore. Than he has distance, to, to run, run a certain speed. Time. I think it's easier to save gas on the high side, Jeff, because when you're on the bottom of the racetrack, you're scrubbing a lot more speed. You slow the car okay. down a lot more in the middle of the corner. You need to use more gas to propel yourself down the next straightaway. So running up on the high side, you have a steady momentum. You don't have to use quite as much gas. I know it's silly, but it's not a distance thing. As we're on board, this helmet came with Daniel Suarez, thanks to Coca-Cola. I mean, let's look at his throttle right here. It's not a distance <laughs> thing. It's time at wide open throttle. That's what burns fuel. I see a lot of green dots, Jeff. Yeah, they're going to they're pit. <laughs> right? They're, gonna, they're just doing what they have to do to run as fast as they can. And he's just full throttle, a little bit out of throttle right there because of the corner. But then he's going back to the throttle. Actually stayed, you know, Stayed off the throttle for a long time, but all the way down this straightaway, he is full throttle, so he's not saving much, if any. So if you're not Oop. running as fast as everyone else, as far as the guys up front, you would fear losing a lap. But with Kyle Busch's situation, he's running 13th. Right now, he's 25 seconds behind race leader Kevin Harvick, but they know that Kevin Harvick has to come to pit road. They know that Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, those guys are all planning to come to pit road. Yeah, Rick, he's not racing out the front window Oop. to Kevin Harvick. He's racing out the back window to Jimmy Johnson, who's already pitted. You know, you, it's, we've heard this before. You just, he just has to know who he is racing to the end of this stage. Our first guy on pit road of those people that did pit, Ryan Blaney, Kelly. Clint Boyer has not been very happy with his car. Now that we've restarted this, he said he's just been sliding all around. He needs more speed, and now he's just said, the car is starting to vibrate. He said, I'm not sure what it's doing, but Mike Bugaravich has told him it's going to be a splash and go, so it doesn't sound like a loose wheel, Marty. Kelly Kevin Harvick said, I blew a tire, I blew a tire. He was coming to pit road this time, and their strategy had flipped once again. Ryan Blaney was just on pit road. He was running second. They went fuel only. Rodney Childers caught wind of that. He said, let's go for fuel only. He said, let's go for the stage win and the race win. But then Harvick, when he was on the backstretch, coming to Pit Road said blew a tire, blew a tire, and I believe, help me out, guys, is it the right front tire? It looks like the right it? rear. It looks right like the rear. right rear yeah, tire. Jeff, the, the right rear tire, guys, and so he is here on Pit Road, caught it, maybe caught it enough time. They're going to go through with this adjustment. Hope there's no right rear damage, but Kevin Harvick, the leader, will see where all this cycles out. Meanwhile, Joey Logano also on Pit Road saying his car way too tight. Logano leaving with some good years and fuel as well, but the four team reacting very quickly what could have been a really bad problem.
11 17 and 24 all on pit road Dave. And here's that 11 pit stop we talked about. Denny has said that the car was a bit free. You see the chassis adjustment happening there. No tire change and fuel only. Same thing for William Byron in the 24. Fuel only for that car. As he's coming off of pit road, Kyle Larson now race leader by 1.8 seconds over Martin Trex Jr. Again, those two drivers last came to pit road on lap 14. Kelly. And now we see a bunch of drivers coming in to just get that splash and go a fuel that they'll need to close out this stage. Martin Truex Jr. included, Marty. Kyle Larson also coming on pit road. He's going to go with four fresh Goodyear tires for him. Said his car was just way too loose for him. Five laps to go here in stage one and a lot of action happening here on pit road. And one clarification, Joey Logano was fuel only when he came down pit road. So we'll see where that nets him out. Kyle Larson leaving pit road, guys. Any concerns, Steve, about that right rear tire? About that tire unwinding Something's on the four cars? Something wrong with the 12 car here? I don't know if something's wrong or if you remember, he didn't change tires. He's on fuel only versus the 11, I believe, changed tires. So he just has way, way more speed to answer your question, Dale. Yeah, oh, yeah. Anytime I see a tire unwind, I have concern for everyone else. Parker. The 41 of Daniel Suarez are just on pit road. It's fuel only as well. Bud Boyer, same thing in the 14. He stop and go for fuel just to get him to the end of the stage which right now is only four laps away. So Eric Jones, Matt DiBenedetto, Kyle Busch. Eric Jones is on pit road. They were one two and three. Jones is on pit road. Parker. Kyle Busch trying to get a pit road. And guys for the 20 of Eric Jones this should only be fuel only as I see Kyle Busch coming on pit road. As well. Oh they're doing tires as well. Brady's coming on pit road also. Blaney's got a problem. Yeah, you were right. I misspoke. Denny Hamlin was fuel only, just like Blaney. So that speed problem for the 12, Jeff, had to have been a problem. He's got a flat tire, guys. I think that's the right rear as well. And it's interesting. Kevin Harvick said on the radio, I think the car was just so loose for us that it, quote, blew the cap off that right rear tire. So being very loose, we talked about the green racetrack. I wonder if that's had an effect. And that's certainly going to put way more heat in that right rear tire, Steve. I think that's what we're seeing here with the four and the case for the 12 as well. I think as the race goes on, we'll get more rubber down. Those tires issues won't be quite as bad, but this is real concerning. And now you see Ryan Newman there in that six. Oscar Meyer car also, also coming, but you say spin and turn three. Spin and turn, spin and turn three. three. Right rear tire is blown on the 14 car. Clint Boyer. Or Val, get a call when you can. Heavy damage. Boyer around. Caution comes out. Two laps to go before the end of the stage. You asked the question, should you be worried about right rear tires? The four car caught and saved his. His teammate Clint Boyer obviously had a right rear tire issue. And he's got to keep this car rolling. If that ever stops, it'll be stuck in this wet grass. Kelly. Remember I said that he was reporting that the car had started to vibrate and even after they made that quick pit stop uh, Clint Boyer as we look at, at Kyle Busch there he had said we've definitely got something going on Dave chaos. Well another thing that surprised me about the 18 when he came to pit road they worked on the left side and he had hit the right side Dave. Well so Rick the driver reported a few laps ago that the right side was quote pissed off and then he reported under green and at speed the left front is down. So he thought that they only needed to change two left side tires. And that's where the confusion has come. And, and so while all of this is going on, Denny Hamlin's leading the race. Okay? Denny Hamlin <laughs> yeah. going to potentially, now that it's under caution, will win the stage. So Denny Hamlin, who's out front after all of that chaos, Brad Keselowski, Michael McDowell running third right now, never came to pit road under green and so Michael McDowell he'll go to the apron to make sure that he has enough fuel to get all the way around but Michael McDowell is going to be able to probably finish third in this stage. Well that was a unique situation where these guys were just trying to stretch it to the end of the stage. We might not find ourselves in a situation where we're trying to push the tire that hard again but it's something to keep your mind on. Four flats. That's right right side tires for issues in stage one. It started with a great save by Kevin Harvick. But then others had issues, even his teammate, Clint Boyer, who brought the caution out. And that means Denny Hamlin will win stage one here at Chicago Land. It was a long first stage. 
because obviously the rain delay. But then it got chaotic, not only at the beginning, but also at the end. And now those that just did fuel only, they are back on pit road. We go to Parker. And Jimmy Johnson will pit out of the third place position because Mike McDowell had to come down and get fuel. This should be four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel on the 48 car. Still struggling with a little bit of turn through one and two. Arnie. Brad Kozlowski pitted at lap 52 when that caution came out at the end of that stage. Said, man, I was coming. We were going to win that stage. Paul Wolf told him, hey, man, we know we have a good car. Car just a little bit too free for Kozlowski. A little wedge adjustment there. Also, Austin Dillon, very front in the pit road. That worked out well for he and Danny Stockman. All these guys getting four fresh Goodyear tires from Sunoco Fuel here on pit road. And yeah, the race off pit road brought to you by Kroger. It's Eric Jones. With a two tire stop, gaining nine spots. Comes off the pit road second behind Denny Hamlin. For the first time in over 68 years, golf's most storied major championship returns to Northern Ireland. Tiger Woods, hometown hero Roy McElroy, and the best golfers in the world are going to compete to be called the champion golfer of the year. The Open, that's July 18th through the 21st. Marty. Hey Rick, so we've talked about all these right rear tires coming apart and these teams having issues. So this is what a tire looks like when it comes unwound. That's the right rear for Ryan Blaney. He came off a moment ago. They came in a moment ago and took on left side tires. But you see what we talked about with that unwinding? Goodyear officials tell us that's high wear. It will get better. It does happen often with a green racetrack. Steve mentioned that. But the, for what it's worth, the run for Harvick was 59 laps when his right rear happened. For Blaney and Boyer, 60 laps when their right rear happened. And still through all this, Kevin Harvick has control of the race. So there you go, Steve. Go figure this out as a crew chief. That's why you guys get paid the big bucks. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't think tire wear was on the top of everyone's mind. We talked about it with the green racetrack, but with this increased downforce, we haven't really seen it being an issue. But it was definitely an issue for Kevin Harvick. But so much happened. Let's, let's just take a moment here. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson will be on the front row for this start. Uh, Stenhouse as well. They all pitted about six or eight laps before the end of the stage, took four tires. So they have decent tires, not brand new. That's how they're up front. You see, then you see Hamlin, Jones right there in six. He was just off pit road with two. But from Jimmy on down, it's, you, that's the running order. Everyone at lap 82 came, took four tires, full of fuel. So there's a ton of strategies, but really they've all been reset. The only real difference is those front three or four have six or eight laps on their tires, Dale. I know there was a lot going on, but I think that's the simplest way to understand the snapshot. Oh, it right. Thanks you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, how much is that going to affect these guys as we get ready to watch the field approaching the Geico restart zone? The guys that don't have as fresh tires for six laps. Well, we saw yesterday the Xfinity race. They're around the whole track position. Let's see how Harvick does it here on this restart. Him and Larson accelerate out of the restart zone. Hamlin pretty tight to the four. He should get the shove. Yeah, Larson did. Larson got a great jump, but the 17 of Stenhouse behind him did not. So he had no one pushing him. He's Huge on. disadvantage. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson on the outside making it three wide. Stenhouse on the bottom on the used tires. No, not where you want to be on a restart with good tires. And now the 42, 48. same thing, going backwards. Yeah, 42 going backwards to 48, giving the four a shove right there. And so now Jimmy Johnson trying to work to the outside of Denny Hamlin for a second as Kevin Harvick trying to hold on to that lead out front. And further back, look at the nine car on the very bottom of the racetrack, right? He is coming. He has passed about seven or eight cars on this restart. This is the best time. You got to be aggressive on these restarts. You got to be up on the wheel, try to take advantage of these guys while everybody's bunched together. No better time to take up a bunch of positions like this. Now the back straightaway. Look at William Byron side draft in the 20 car. Eric Jones. A big run out of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. He closed the gap on Kevin Harvick. He's got a little bit better tire. He's going to try to take advantage of it now as these laps click off and these tires get a little worn. The advantage goes away. So many different lines around this racetrack. Kevin Harvick right in the middle. Outside of him, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. The 11 of Denny Hamlin down toward the white line. Kevin Harvick's really looking at his mirror right now, trying to take that draft away from, give it to the 48 a little while, then the 11, not give it to either one of them to advantage them down the straightaway. Yeah, who do you want to have behind you? I don't know, I don't know if I want Denny Hamlin behind me. He's been pretty good all weekend. I don't know, but you like seeing them side by side behind you. <laughs> That's absolutely right. He's driving away while these guys are side drafting each other. Looks like William Byron's gonna try to make it three wide. He's back there on the high side. Does he have enough momentum? 
Going that, down the back straightaway, he should have a little bit of a run with something to do here. He's going to push. He's, he's going to push Jimmy Johnson past the 11. Can he clear the 11 also? He does. That was a smart move. He could have went three wide at the bottom, but that would have put him on the bottom, probably not where he wants to be. Yeah, get that one spot. Don't get greedy. Get two. Try to get, get that one. Know you can get that one. All the way down to the apron. Kevin Harvick trying to break that draft. Look at Jimmy look at Johnson Eric Jones. followed him down there. Byron also. Yeah, Kevin knows the more laps that go by, the harder it gets for these guys to get around him. He's trying to try <laughs> keep this lead as long as he can, try to neutralize those new tires behind him. He does not want to get behind this 48 and get in that dirty air with those used tires. That'll be a difficult position for him. That shows you how strong Kevin Harvick's car is, able to hold everybody off with a little bit older tire that he has on his car. William Byron going a little bit higher. Check this out. Eric Jones saw, saw the move coming. Just went up and blocked it. You're going to start seeing that more with this package. You're going to have to do things that you weren't doing last year. Everybody kind of expects it. It doesn't. It's not that it make, doesn't make you mad. If I was the 42 of Kyle Larson, it would have made me mad. But you have to do what you have to do to keep them behind you. Parker. Hey, guys, you just saw the 48 there. Jimmy Johnson lose the nose as Kevin Harvick moved to the middle of the racetrack and took his airway. That is what he's been struggling with in traffic, even though he has those new tires. Being in traffic and getting tight, and juniors, you and I talked about, that's one of the, the problems this package that drivers are experiencing is that you can get your air taken away and suddenly lose that nose. So he's going to have to find clear air on that nose if he can get around this four car. That's why that spotter is so important, telling you where that guy is, what lane he's in behind you. All you got to do is pull up in front and take his, take his air. Dave. Guys, nine car of Chase Elliott, you see right there, the blue and white Napa car is back on the lead lap and passing for eighth position or being challenged for eighth by Truex down there on the low line. They got that car back where you can drive it. He said it feels like a new race car. It's a little bit darty, but the nine overcame a two lap deficit. He's back in the back in the hunt again. Kyle Larson running in the sixth position. As you see these three, three wide, <laughs> different parts of the racetrack. There's Kyle Larson Listen to his radio. Guys are going to keep driving us that way. We're going to have to start keeping them at some point. Get it, but I don't want to get ourselves wrecked either when we got a chance to win. Yeah, well, that's going to get us wrecked if we keep having to check up like that. We're going to knock the nose off of it. <laughs> For the lead, here comes Jimmy Johnson. Just not quite to that quarter panel. Trying the side there. drive. He's trying it. William Byron's behind these guys on the high side. If they do get the side drafting, that's a perfect situation for William. William got William's going right to the here. top of his teammate right here. He's going to outside that 48 car. Going to try to get him right there side draft 48, slow him down, keep that momentum on the high side. Jimmy Johnson hanging tough on the bottom. They're going to be side by side off of two. Now, William is all oh, he cleared him. Damn. Think William, about it. William got, Byron yeah. had an engine change. He started the back of the field at this race. He's already up front. Now he's running to try to chase down the four of Kevin Harvick for the lead. And remember what he did last week, Sonoma. You know, led laps, issue one again stages. With Clint Boyer. Okay, another right rear tire issue. Probably had a rub, tire rub, some met sheet metal got into that tire. And Kevin Harvick doing serious mirror driving at the moment. 14's on the back straightaway. Will that bring out a caution? He's going really slow. He may not make it back. I think he'll make it back just whether he'll throw any debris or any kind of tire debris or anything on the racetrack, that's the question. William Byron, though, man, this guy has turned in the corner right here in front of us. We were wondering when he's going to put races together. He sat on the front row seven times this year. Three pole positions. Driving like he's been in this series for a long time. Everybody asked about William Byron and Chad Knauss and what it would be like for Kevin Mendering and Jimmy Johnson. Well, it's taken some time. It hasn't been smooth, but race 17. Here they are. Here they are. Second and third. I thought just one would figure it out. I didn't know they both figured it out. <laughs> and you know, Chad Knauss had started to play the points game, 14th in the playoff standings with William Byron. And now they don't have to play the points game if they're going to be fighting for a position like this. I like that move right there by William Byron. You know, just running the running that front straightaway, just taking the dog leg out of it, just making it as short as you can. It he gained getting into turn one doing that, Kelly. 
And both spotter Tab Boyd and Coochie Chad Canals kind of coaching and encouraging William Byron. You talk about them playing the points game specifically last week at Sonoma. Chad Canals told me they had to till they were securely inside the top 16. But he said, now I feel like we can go out there and let him race for position a little bit more. And what a job he has done on these restarts. Once again, the best restarter uh, this last to start this stage of six positions for William Byron. Goes to the inside. Yeah. This is for the lead. What a run William Byron has as he tries to get by Harvick. How hard will Harvick fight this? No, and he's got those older tires. He doesn't want to give this position. He's going to, nope, nope. I thought he's going to go down there and try to get on that quarter panel. I mean, he just can't stop him. New William. leader, William Byron out front. William just too strong. Chad Knauss, the crew chief from Rockford, Illinois. 111 miles away from the track. Hometown crew chief trying to get to victory lane here. And the young man, William Byron, takes over the lead at Chicago Lane. Caution has come out here once again. We continue to enjoy Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series racing from Chicago Land and Quinn Huff on pit road having an issue with the rear end. They think there's some fluid, definitely an issue with the rear end there as he was able to move the body of the car around there. Uh, Steve, it seems as though this caution is going to benefit the 18. Yeah, listen, we steamed him in the wall once, then we saw him on pit road with a flat right front tire, and now what are we seeing? Kyle Busch going back on the lead lap. That's big. Dale, you said don't count them out. Heck, he's back on the lead lap. We're not even through the second stage yeah, the yet. The other thing I like about this, especially as a driver, maybe as a crew chief too, Steve, is that we only have 56 laps to go in this stage. Those tire issues that we were having in that first segment, uh, the first stage at 59, 60 laps, we're not going to have to worry about that anymore at this stage. No, don't have to worry about it. But I expect pit road to be a busy, busy place right here. I expect everyone to pit, Rick. We see Clint Boyer in the 14. He's still on pit road. He limped all the way around the racetrack to get back to pit road. And you see the damage that's done to the right side. They continue to work on that car. And as you mentioned, uh, when pit road is open here, which it is, they'll be able to come down to pit road. Everyone who wants to will be able to with just 56 laps to go in this second stage. Clint Boyer having a not a great year. He had two wins at this point last year. And they've had some good runs, but this, this finish right here is really going to hurt them in points. So much pressure put on the crew members now, the over the wall crew members. No mistakes, and you got to get your guy out there faster than you had before, or better positions than when he comes in. William Byron will lead the field onto pit road. Parker. And Jimmy Johnson pits out a third place. This could be a big day points wise for them. He's just a little two three through turns one and two. It's going to be four Goodyear tires of Sunoco fuel. Kelly. William Byron led the last six laps. Before the caution came out, he said, whatever you did last time was really good. I could use some more of that. So it's an air pressure adjustment for Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel for William Byron, Marty. Kevin Harvick told Rodney Childers, he said, whatever he did last time made the front work better, but we already need more rear grip. You saw them make the track bar adjustment. First thing they did, they went down one round. Also an air pressure adjustment here, kind of undoing the last air pressure adjustment. We'll see where this gets Harvick, but William Byron wins the race off pit road. Right? Byron then Harvick Johnson and Hamlin all holding their positions coming off of pit road Larson gains a spot Chase Elliott is going to get a couple Austin Dillon losing two out of that prime number one pit stall. Great to be back at the racetrack with the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series and what a race we've already seen. It has been incredible up to this point. Monster Energy Cup Series definitely putting on another incredible show here at Chicagoland Speedway. And it's a, an event. I know people went scurrying when the storm came through, but prior to that, what an awesome situation it was to be here at the racetrack. Now, I mentioned you got to be perfect if you're going to be a crew to try to keep your guy in contention. And that right there was an uncontrolled tire. There was not a crew member within an arm's length of that tire. And so they get that penalty and they will have to serve that penalty. Kelly. All right, so William Byron won the race off pit road. He'll lead the field back to green. Here is the discussion on which lane to choose. What do you think on lane choice here, Tab? I'm thinking outside. Yeah, that's what they've been doing all weekend. 
I know the trucks were on the bottom from what I was watching earlier, but I think I think with our side draft, top will be better. I agree. And so you can see he's laying there on the top, and for what it's worth, crew chief Chad Canal said, I concur. That's really cool, William Byron studying, watching all the races this weekend. One of the things William Byron said as he's been running better that he needs to get better at is restarts. So leading this pack, let's see what he can do. Let's see if he's learned those lessons. 52 laps to go in stage two as the field once again approaches the Geico restart zone. Back up through the gears. Kyle Larson giving the 24 a shove. Jimmy Johnson working behind Kevin Harvick. Bumpers locked as they go to turn one. But William on that three wide on the outside. Austin trying to make it four wide. Not the start Byron needed. Byron drops all the way back. Probably loses six or seven positions on the restart. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. dodges to the outside, trying to get by the 10 of Eric Almarola. That's what William Byron's been talking about, needing to find a way to be better on restarts. You can see where he is. He had the lead, comes across after one lap and 11. And on that outside, thought the outside was a place to be, didn't get up through the gears as quickly. Chase Elliott up to third place now. Larson restarted fourth. He's up in the mix. These guys are battling back here. Oh, 24 really loose right there over the bumps. Trying to battle back. He's embarrassed right now. He's like, I got to get all these spots back. I know my crew chief is disappointed. I got to work hard and try to get these spots back. Watch him to be aggressive. Junior, that's a perfect way to say it. You want to make your crew guys happy. You want to make them proud of you. And when you don't, it is embarrassing. It's hard to explain it. You're disappointed in yourself, but you're disappointed for your team. Issue for Mark Trix Jr. in turn one and two there. William Byron trying to get around him. Bowman goes by. We all thought Alex had a great car in practice this weekend. Start to get up into the top ten here to show it. Working by Stenhouse, trying to use the air, the quarter panel to side draft him. He's going to have to follow that one. That's not going to be great for Arrow. The 17 still on the outside side drafting, taking some side force away. He'll have the momentum down the back straightaway to keep that position. And Junior, just talking to Alex before this race, he was feeling very confident. And as they got started, he was a little too tight to start. Then they went too far and he was too loose. And now it's starting to come back to him. You're seeing it here on the street start. Starting to drive himself towards that top five again. All the different lines here. Alex Bowman running a little bit higher line than Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now Jimmy Johnson again having a run, trying to get to the back bumper of Kevin Harvick. Kevin Kevin. moving down on that front back straightaway, trying to break that draft. See if he does it again. And we talked about it earlier. Chase Elliott got lapped on the racetrack earlier. And now he's running third. That is a great recovery this early in the race. Usually when you start pulling Packer on pit road, it doesn't <laughs> get any better. <laughs> but Alan Gustafson is amazing as a crew chief. He's about to pass his teammate for second place. Dave. And Junior, he's trying to keep it all in perspective. You know what a dry sense of humor he has. And he says, uh, the last report, I'm in an OK place. Yeah, I'd say so right now. Yeah. Something we haven't seen in a long time is Hendrick Motorsports all inside the top 10, but that is exactly what's happening right now. Jimmy Johnson closing the gap once again on Kevin Harvick and Chase Elliott right behind him. Look at the wins this season all in the top 10. <laughs> One, Chase Elliott running third. At Talladega. Yeah, and Not I think the discount a win, but now we're at a mile and a half. I think running well here gives all of these teams a little bit more hope, a little bit more of a bright spot. And Steve, the surprise is the names on that list that haven't won. Harvick, Johnson, Larson, Kurt Busch. I'm just unbelievable that those guys haven't been able to get to victory lane, but Joe Gibbs Racing, Kyle Busch, Martrex Jr. have been so good. When we talk about restarts and how aggressive they are, look at Denny Hamlin making it pretty wide on the bottom with his teammate. Just real aggressive, but you're going to have to do those things. With, with this package and how aggressive you have to be, you're going to have to put yourself and your competitors in situations that you don't really want to be in. And when the drivers are talking about they can't pass, this is exactly what they're talking about. Jimmy Johnson knows that his car's better than Kevin Harvick's, but Kevin knows what he needs to do to keep the 48 car behind him. 
Jimmy keeps getting these runs. And they're just in the wrong spots to be able to take advantage of it and get up there and side draft and make a position, take the position away. It's a little frustrating, but it's a lot of fun at the same time. And how about the two oldest guys in the field <laughs> running first, second? I was going to say, guys the, one, rule, man. the one thing we always talk about is the young guys. Well, the 43-year-old Jimmy Johnson, as well as the 43-year-old Kevin Harvick up front. We go NASCAR nonstop. You're watching the Camping World 400 from Chicagoland Speedway out front. It's Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson running right behind him about four tenths of a second back. And it's been fun watching these two veterans choose different lines as they go around this racetrack. Jimmy Johnson trying to figure out how to catch up to Kevin Harvick. Harvick trying to block every move that Jimmy Johnson makes. Take a couple, take a couple seconds to look at this replay of Kyle Busch. And Blaney down the front straightaway. <laughs> Blaney turned down into him a little bit. It looked like hard to tell. Oh, I hate on still. Well, the very next lap had a little more contact. These two are just racing hard. Oh, buddy. Oh. He just about <laughs> sent him right there. Well, that's about big. We're What's laughing this? up here, Junior, but they're not laughing at no. those cars. They are not very happy with each other. No. My goodness. Man, that was a little bit of a well, message Kyle, across the bow. Kyle Busch is back on the lead lap. Now Blaney is trying to get that lucky dog. He's the first car lap down. And, you know, Kyle Busch is like, hey, try to get by you here. Hard enough. So we've been watching this race for the lead with Harvick and Johnson. And we're talking about what do you do as a driver when you're leading the race? Well, check out Kevin Harvick. Check his eyes out. You know, watch him look in the rear view in the mirror. This is something we are accustomed to see in a place like Daytona and Talladega where you really drive out of the mirror. But Kevin Harvick is really, that's what he's doing. You watch those eyes. He keeps looking in the mirror, keeps glancing up, seeing where Jimmy Johnson is. What do I need to do? Do I need to take the bottom? Do I need to take the top? That's what that's all about. That's the defensive move by Kevin Harvick to take the air away from Jimmy Johnson. I think another thing that that, that helps you or what I learned from doing that is when I changed my line, I looked at, did I gain on the car behind me? Did I put some, you know, distance between us? 
If I did, I might continue to try to use that same line. You'll move around, run lane one, two, three, four. See if you're gaining on or pulling away from that guy more. That's one thing. We talk a lot during these broadcasts about spotters and how they provide information, but a lot of times that information is the things that you're learning, that your spotter's not necessarily seeing, and you don't necessarily need all that from the spotter. You're looking and learning as you're paying attention to where you're better and where you're worse. Jimmy's got a great car. I, I thought the four car was going to start to drive away. He put a little bit of a distance on him, but G Jimmy's coming back. He's, he's able to kind of maintain what we see right here. And that tells me that I think if the roles were reversed, if Jimmy was out front, he'd drive away. Pretty I'm impressive. Not sure race anyone can drive away, is my question. <laughs> I just don't know that the draft is keeping Jimmy there. I think he's actually got a better race car. And right now, it seems as though the field is separated by about a half a second between cars. So a perfect time for us to go through the field. We'll start with Marty. Hey, Rick, Kevin Harvick clicks off lap number 90, led for the day. He's in the lead right now. When he was asked earlier this week about not having any wins, as you see right there in 2019, he said, I'm, quote, beyond the frustration. Now I see it as a challenge. And he told me it really started to turn around with Eric Almirola in a test at Indy. We put that setup in at Kansas. We've been fast ever since, Parker. Right, Marty. And Junior was just wondering if that 48 got ahead of the four, maybe he could pull away. Well, they've been wondering the same thing because all season, one of the things they've fought in that 48 car is traffic-related issues. When he gets cars in front of him, he can't seem to do things that he wants. And he just came across the radio and said, I'm floating the nose on exit when I get too close to the four. More traffic-related issues, Dave. It was funny, Parker. They talked to Chase Elliott this week about a few things, and he said about a roller coaster ride that NASCAR sometimes is. You just got to stay with it. Well, it's been that way today. The car was fast to start with but then had all kinds of problems they had to fix it marty at one time they were two laps down now he's third when i talked to kyle larson before the race he said one thing we're worried about that cut line in the playoffs why do we fix that quit making mistakes just 18 above it right now in a very good position in fourth dave Kurt bush told his team early the car is tight then he told him it was tight then he told him it was tight he said you know what i probably didn't tell you guys in practice just how tight it was but it's like that again even so he's running fifth parker the guy that just went by him, Alex Bowman, you know, at the end of last year, he gained a lot of confidence running the high side of racetracks. That gave him a lot of confidence in this package. His team tells me that is why they've run so well to Mount Ass. Of course, he goes to the bottom there, but he's feeling pretty good now moving to the fifth, Kelly. The sophomore William Byron working with Chad Canals this year. Chad told me it's obviously very different than working with Jimmy Johnson, but in a really nice way. He said even though this is William's second year, he didn't feel like he got enough true racing experience last year because the program wasn't just good enough, so he's got He's got a lot to learn. This really feels like his rookie season, Parker. Kelly, Eric Jones entered this race five points out of the playoff cutoff line. I spoke to his crew chief, Chris Gale, and he told me, you know, we're not really focused on that. We just need to win races. Meanwhile, inside the race car right now, he just said, I'm hanging on, Dave. Eric Almirola is hanging on to that top groove, and that was what he did not prefer here at Chicagoland Speedway. So Johnny Klausmeyer's crew chief told me we spent a lot of time on that in practice yesterday. And you can see as he tries to run down Byron, uh, run down to... Uh, run down Eric Jones. He uses that high line right there, Parker. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has been great on the miles a half, mile and a half racetracks this year. He scored 60 more points than his teammate Ryan Newman, but he's 43 points out of the playoffs coming in this race. His crew chief Brian Patty told me if we exit this race more than 50 out, then we're in Hail Mary mode going to Daytona, Marty. Austin Dillon told me coming into the weekend, Parker, Chicago, one of my favorite mile and a half. He won the pole, but his pit stall here at Chicago, even though it's the number one stall, not so good. He said it's slick on entry and exit. He lost two spots on the last stop, Kelly. I'm trying to chase him down there is Martin Truex Jr. trying to go to the outside. His crew chief, Cole Pern, said, I don't know if we're going to win this thing or finish 20th. We have speed. I'm not sure how the handling is. Martin started off happy, but here's what he said recently over the radio. I feel like we just made it looser. So it sounds like not very happy with those last changes on pit road, Rick. And that was the switch for second right there. Chase Elliott takes it away from Jimmy Johnson. And here comes Kyle Larson as well. Larson running right up against that wall. And we knew that at one point in time during this race, that's where most of the cars would congregate, right near the wall. These guys are still not far behind our leader, but you see Jimmy Johnson struggling, the 42 of Larson trying to find a way around him. And behind them, the guy that's been the fastest in the top five over the last several laps, Max Bowman. And not just the fastest, 
top, middle, bottom. Right. Right? He's moving He's around moving everywhere. everywhere. He's running all sorts of lines, making great speed, trying to get by the 42 here on the bottom, a three and four, but oh, that 42 runs that top really good. He's going to have a great run down this straightaway here. Look at the difference in speed off of, four, off of turn four. Look at Jimmy. He's coming back on Chase. Chase must have had a problem down there in three and four. Lost a lot of speed. Yeah, here Chase comes Larson, flying. too. Chase was way faster than everybody else. Look at him coming back on the outside. He was two or three tenths a lap quicker than everybody. Hearing that Kevin Harvick thinks he might have a right front tire problem, and he's been about three to four tenths a second slower than Chase Elliott the last few laps. There it is. Oh, Issue that's the with the 41. So Suarez has smoke coming out of the back of the car. Looks like he's had some contact on that lip or quarter panel. It's, it's into the tire. Nose to tail still for Jimmy Johnson and Chase Elliott. Johnson in the 48, Elliott in the 9. Here comes Larson in the 42. Kevin Harvick still with an eight tenth of a second lead right now over Jimmy Johnson running second. And issues for the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Take a look at this, running right up near the wall. Let's get in the back of that 41. The 41's going to slide up the racetrack here. Denny's going to pop him in the quarter panel. Almost spins him out. Denny's probably got some pretty good damage to that right front headlight. Yeah, big contact there between Denny Hamlin and Daniel Suarez. Parker. And got Daniel Suarez on pit road. They did four tires. They pulled that out that left rear fender. But I actually saw all that go down off of turn four. And it was like the 41 checked up a little bit, and the, eight, the 11 had nowhere to go. Another great battle. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson running second, Elliott third. We go NASCAR nonstop. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Perfect for race fans. And by Coca-Cola. Enjoy Coca-Cola and make this summer the most memorable ever. And a great five-car battle for the lead. Well, 
most of it's been for second. Kevin Harvick's been watching it in his rearview mirror as he's been out front almost a six to seven tenth of a second lead over Jimmy Johnson or Chase Elliott. Both of those two have been running side by side and fighting for that second position. Once again, they do it. As we saw Kyle Larson work to the inside of Bowman. Now Bowman still in front of that 42. And here comes again another run by Chase Elliott. Jeff, you talked about the four car of Harvick maybe concerned about that right front. So I'm thinking he's riding just hard enough to stay out front. This battle, though, back behind these guys has really been interesting. I thought the uh, Jimmy Johnson was, was struggling. Now he's in second. He's racing his teammate pretty hard. Got a great race car. Bowman having trouble getting by the 42, though, to be able to continue to progress. The last, last lap, 88, Drew did exactly the same thing. Drove up in front of Larson, lost all his momentum on corner exit. <laughs> this time he blocks that move, keeps Larson from going back underneath him. Let's see if he can clear him on the inside. Same thing happened the lap before. Wow, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Is there room? No. They stay off of each other, though. Bowman loses the spot. Larson up to, up to the fourth position. And second and third and run Harvick down. We got some great racing. Man, that was a great shot. Half a second. The difference now between Harvick and Johnson. Now Johnson with a little bit of a run as Chase Elliott tried to get by him on the inside. I'd like to say that they're closing the gap on Harvick, but I just don't know how much he's monitoring that himself. He may have a lot more race car than we think. He's trying to take care of these tires. These guys behind him are duking it out. 12 laps to go in stage two. One thing we've learned during this battle, Dale, is you know, if you make a move and it doesn't work, you go from offense to defense, right? It takes not a corner. It takes a couple laps for you to kind of work that momentum back up to try to get back on the offensive. Yeah, if you catch a lap car the wrong way or get in some dirty air and have to lift off the gas, the guy behind you gets such a big run down the next straightaway. It takes almost a whole half a lap to get your speed back up. These two still side by side. Bowman and Larson down the front straightaway. Bowman just can't quite figure it out. He'll clear him. Let's see if he tries to do it again. See if he overdrives the entry, slides up in front of Larson, but Larson knows it's coming. Has that good momentum on corner exit. Bowman CB completes the pass. Crosses but him over. <laughs> right. Every lap this is happening. Oh, wow. almost touched yeah. right there, trying to get aggressive on the side draft. Now Bowman on the top, see what kind of run he gets. He doesn't go all the way to the wall like the 42, but still got a pretty decent run. It's going to be easy to defend. He's Larson trying try to get by on the oh, inside. Well, Larson didn't want to give him the top, so he kind of gave him the bottom because he feels like he's seen this every lap. Let's listen along as we ride along with the 88. Do you feel like you're racing a midget here or what? Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Okay, just race. Stay after your bus. Yeah, that's those, <laughs> you know, Jack racing quarter midgets and all that stuff, you know what I mean? That's, I, you see those crossovers like that, racing racing quarter midgets with kids. You know, you get a big run, and pass, close down, and get the run the next corner. Reminds me of that. I think Bowman's finally got a secure hold on that position. Hendrick Motorsports, there you see it. All in the top ten. Pretty impressive run. Greg Ives giving the comments to Alex Bowman. And now, once again, here comes Larson. Larson, a little side draft as he goes by the 88. Bottom of the racetrack, trying to take that fourth spot away. This is the evolution of NASCAR. Before, Dale, when you were in the car, Jeff, when you drove, when you put that work in and you passed a guy, it was over. You shut the air up, you drove away. In this... What we're seeing here, you work, you pass the guy, but when you pull up, there's enough of a draft help to keep him in the game, and he can go back, attack you, and pass you back. I want to know if they're banging their fists on the steering wheel or if they're smiling. I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure which they're doing inside the car. Well, we're smiling. Harvick now seven-tenths of a second lead as they're coming up on seven laps to go in this second stage. Jimmy Johnson running second, Chase Elliott is third. Big points day right now for Jimmy Johnson. Again, coming into this race, he was one point below the cutoff line for the playoffs. So Jimmy Johnson, a big day in points. He needed this, and the momentum now as he runs up in the top three consistently, could that give him the confidence to get up there and run for the win at the end of this race? 
You mentioned Hendrick Motorsports, Dale. How about Chevrolet? I've been hard on Chevrolet, on NASCAR America, saying, listen, they got to figure it out to run with these Fords, to run with these Toyotas. Well, we have a Ford leading as the teammates go side by side into one of Kevin Harvick. But Chevrolet, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That is impressive turnaround for the bow tie. Man, that nine car. Chase Elliott chasing the back of that car all the way up off the corner, trying to slide up in front of his teammate. These guys are <laughs> but trade, Jimmy's right back there. Yeah. The trade position, lap after lap. Jimmy does it side draft, decides to cut the corner, cut the straightaway, shorten it up. The 42 is following him down there, trying to get a toe off of the 48. Do you think they could work together to try to I run was the wondering, four down? Yeah, I was wondering at the times they get to run on each other on the front straightaway if they did push each other, but it's there's so much turbulence behind that lead car that the front tires literally feel like they come off the ground when you're that close to another car. I don't know if you want to put your front tires through what they'll have to go through to push a guy down the straightaway, at least this dog leg front straightaway. Here comes the 42 now of Kyle Larson. I've seen the 48 of Jimmy Johnson get a little bit loose a couple times hitting the bumps. They are running this leader down too. Yes. Look, they've closed in on Harvick for, for whatever reason. Okay, he caught Priest. I think he caught Priest and got in Priest's dirty air and that slowed him up. Kroger on camera here. Yep. The Kroger bumper cam for Priest. Showing the nine car Chase Elliott. He's closing, closes in on our leader. Once again, look at this, the helmet cam. Thanks, Kroger, for giving us this perspective. Now, Priest has a pretty good view of what's going to happen here as they battle for three laps to go in stage two. Here comes the nine of Chase Elliott. Remember, Chase Elliott made major changes to this race car on pit road, said it was terrible, and now he's fighting for the lead here at Chicago Land. Really out of nowhere. I mean, he just caught the leader in just a couple of laps. Drove away from his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's obviously here, lost third position to Larson. You were questioning how hard Kevin Harvick was putting it. Well, with two to go in this stage, we are gonna find out how hard he was pushing it. Chase Elliott would love to win this stage. And what about that tire issue, the front tire issue that Kevin Harvick possibly had? Was that just something that they may have said to make think of make people think that they had an issue. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy is struggling right now. His car looks awful loose there in one and two. Something that something that Kevin Harvick was feeling. He was feeling something that he was worried about. And I, I think I, I believe that Junior's right. He kind of paced it back just to make sure he was OK on that right front. He just picked up a tenth of a second on that lap versus what he lay in the lap before. I don't know the right rear on that 48 has got much left. Well, the nine he is hanging on and the nine was much slower that lap. He yeah. was about half a second slower that lap than he was in run before. So maybe the nine starting to have an issue here. Well, the four of Kevin Harvick said that he had an issue with the front tire. He was able to hold on to the lead while the battle for second, third, fourth and fifth were going on. And while he held on, he held on for the win of stage two. So Kevin Harvick will win stage two, another playoff point for him, but yet no win in 2019. Well, that's some playoff points. We talked about at the start of this show how the guys that have been winning all the races, they've been separating themselves. That's a playoff point for Kevin Harvick. We've seen drivers from Hendrick Motorsports, a resurrection here. What about Stuart Haas and Kevin Harvick? Stage two complete here at Chicagoland. Did you go to your garage? Did you make a, st a swap in your Osterdale Jr.? I did. I put Jimmy Johnson in NASCAR.com slash fantasy. Go on, sign up, play. Nothing makes sport more exciting than ribbing your buddy whose fantasy team isn't quite as good as yours at the moment. <laughs> I'm taking credit for that. Hey, by the way, I took uh, I took and put Denny Hamlin in the garage and brought Martin Truex Jr. out of the garage. So and I, I, I looked over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's hope that that worked. Here comes the field onto pit road. And we'll get to Dave. 
fantasy players were worried about Chase Elliott, but they made that nine car so much better. Chase said it's a little propped up on the right rear, but I think I have to have that to run the high line like Homestead. We've talked about how that works similarly here at Chicagoland. Slight air pressure adjustment, Marty. Kyle Larson said the balance is fine. A little bit too tight at the end, so a very small air pressure adjustment. And his quote was, I'm better than these guys in front of me, including Kevin Harvick on the bottom of your screen. No mention of that right front after the first mention of the action. The left front felt like it was giving up at the end there. Harvick's team with a very quick stop and a very small air pressure adjustment. A really slow stop for Chase Elliott. Unfortunate for him as they have issues off of pit road. But I tell you, listening to the cars and the sounds at this racetrack, uh, really make me a little emotional from all of us at NBC Sports. We are so excited to be back at the track, but we return with heavy hearts. Over the offseason, we lost our friend and colleague Dennis Ryan. Dennis was responsible for the fantastic audio you heard on a weekly basis during our broadcast. We loved him and we miss him. From the entire NASCAR on NBC crew, we dedicate our season to his memory. Final stage coming up here in the Monster Energy Cup Series race from Chicago Land Speedway. Well, on July 14th, the NTT IndyCar Series will run on the streets of Toronto. Now, Scott Dixon, he won that race last year, moved to a title. Can current points leader Joseph Newgarden do the same this season? Well, you can find out that's July 14th, IndyCar on NBC NBCSN. Rick, we saw that battle to the end of the stage. Between Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick, well, on this pit stop, big trouble for Chase Elliott right here. If you look at that rear tire change of the hose wrapped around his foot, what that does is it brings the hose up underneath the back of the race car. No big deal. Car gets jacked up. Everything's fine. Here's the problem. New right rear tire goes on. Jack comes down. Guess where the hose is? Under the right rear tire. He has a problem. He can't leave. You know, everything happens so quick. They don't have time to adjust. They had to come back around. Long story short, minus 18. That's what you care about. From second to 20th. Gave up 18 spots with that issue on pit road. And it was smart for Chase Elliott to roll forward. The Jackman had come over there to try to jack up that right side so they could get the hose off. But it took so much time. Now it's Kevin Harvick on the outside. Kyle Larson on the inside. Green flag back in the air as we get underway with the final stage. That outside line has been pretty strong. Taking off. Oh, we got a lot of contact back there with Brad Keselowski and Austin Dillon. But that inside line gets the run into the corner, and you see it right there. Larson taking the lead. Alex Bowman getting challenged by Mark Trix Jr. Way down low. Three wide down the back straightaway. Three wide for second. Harvick on the high side. Bowman right in the middle. Martin Trix Jr. down along the line. Kyle Busch on the top oh, side. Contact. contact. The 48 trying to catch it. He thought Kyle Busch was on that outside. Spotter was probably telling him that. William Byron in the 24 got into the 48. It looked like William Byron was pushed up the racetrack, though. None of those guys knew that they were going to be four wide. Big run now for Alex Bowman in the 88. He moves up to third. Jimmy Johnson will follow him in the 48. Martin Trex Jr. falls back to fifth. Kyle Larson out in front at Chicago Lane. Is this redemption today? And that Eric Amarola making a move. Sixth place, jumping on the outside of Martin Truex. Just see, watch it. Oh, Guys, no. see it. we got smoke in the center off of the corner. Maybe some, maybe some contact right there between the 10 and the 19. Big block by Kyle Busch. Here Look comes Logano, Logano. Logano aggressively taking that spot. That might have cut the lift for a child on the 18 of Kyle Busch. He's coming to pit road. Kyle Busch after that bump there oh, from right. the 22. Side tires. Side, so left side. Left side is going on the 18. Junior, you saw it as soon as it happened. Like that car wiggled. You knew that Kyle caught it, and he also felt the contact. Knew that they cut it down. So they'll do left sides, send it back out. Kyle's up and down day continues. Here comes Bowman. He's going to take second away from Harvick. Now Bowman right behind the 42 of Kyle Larson. Trying push. to take the lead away. He got a push from that four car when he pulled up in front of him. Smart move. Gave him a great run down into turn one. Alex Bowman into the lead. Bowman up front. Kyle Larson now second. Kevin Harvick third. Jimmy Johnson fourth. 
Alex Bowman leads the series to second place, finishes tied with Logano. He needs a win. He wants to win one of these races, Jeff. And remember, guys, in four car, he's been out front a lot in that last stage. So watch this block right here. Kyle runs Joey Logano way down, but they're entering the corner. Now Kyle's got to get him a lane getting in the corner and just didn't give it to him. And, you know, got the left, got the left side set out. It's okay to block, but you gotta give him a lane once you get to the corner. Kevin Harvick's got Harvick the just got into the wall, caution and now out. caution comes out. There's a lot going on here. Kevin Harvick just got into the wall with the right sides. Let's take a look here at the replay, see what happened to Kevin. He's really, he's pretty, oh, he's pretty close behind that 42, but not too close. Just got in the corner and got a little loose. See him chasing the back of the car, correcting it. There are times, Junior, when you get right behind a guy, then you get clean air very suddenly, that that, that change of air pressure on your car completely changes the way it drives off the back of the car. A little bit up there, inside here. Keep taking it one more inside here. Man. See that thing wiggle. Marty. And he said exactly what you guys said. Just got loose there on me. He said I tried to change directions, direction behind those cars. That didn't work out for me. So Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers are going to come down pit road as soon as pit road does open for the four team. You know, there's times that you're behind a car, right? And, and you make a move, and now all of a sudden, it just you get all that downforce at once, and it completely changes the way your car drives. Now Rodney Childers has to go to work figuring out what to do with the four. 88 of Bowman up front. Wonder about that 48 as well. There was damage and I saw some smoke off that left rear a couple times and it looked like it cleared up. This last stage is much longer, a lot harder to break up. What leaders are going to turn left? We know the force coming. Will he drag people with him? He will. William Byron, Ryan Blaney, Eric Jones, Austin Dillon, kind of a split decision. And Michael McDowell and Denny Hamlin also in there, but not a lot decided to come to pit road. Kelly. You can see there that William Byron is coming to pit road. Chad Knauss making the call, and he's just made that call for four fresh Goodyear tires for William Byron, Marty. Rodney Childers very calmly has told us, guys, take your time. Let's get the right side correct. That caution came out at a very good time for Kevin Harvick as he hit the wall. Also, they've been struggling with a tight race car all day long, so they've loosened it up on three consecutive stops, so that's why the car was free for Kevin Harvick. Meanwhile, Ryan Blaney back in the ball game. You see him on the left side of the screen. Got the free pass, a couple of cautions to go. Here he is taking tires, and Blaney still with a quick race car. So doing a little extra work on the four after he got up into the wall, brought out this, the fifth caution here at Chicago Land. A few more pit stops taking place. Those that weren't on the lead lap coming down on the pit road. And Jeff, you and I both took Mark Trex Jr. out of the garage and put him back into our fantasy lineup. Let's take a look at the Toyota driver update for Mark Trex Jr. Well, that's because he started 18th and we had him back there and he's been working his way up steadily. Every time we look up, he has not made great moves to the front, but he's steadily climbing. So he's only run 11 laps in the top five, but as this race comes to an end, he's currently running fifth and we know how good this team and driver have been. So even though it hasn't been good early, I wouldn't count him out. And I think some of his biggest complaints have been both working his way through traffic and some of the moves his competitors up there running in the top five have been making their way around the 19. But the car's good. He said after those last changes, hey, it's gotten better. Martin Truex Jr. currently running up in the top five, chasing after Alex Bowman. I'll tell you what, we have seen amazing racing here and side drafting, guys working the draft. But guess what? We're going to Daytona next week. It'll be Saturday on NBC, 7.30, the night race. Fourth of July weekend, guys. What a what a special event that is. We had some new rules, too, at Talladega that haven't been run at Daytona, and the drivers, they loved it. They love the runs they were getting at Talladega. Can't wait to see this race this next weekend. Well, we've been talking about how important restarts are when they only get four and four with 92 laps to go. So look back here, Brad Keselowski and Eric Jones. Everybody's pushing each other. A lot of contact right there. And this has been throughout the whole field. Just 
it just you have to be aggressive. Look at this. Four wide, three wide, smoke flying. These are restarts we're accustomed to seeing on short tracks, not mile and a half. Constant contact, and I think Junior during the break you said everybody was on pit road that last time. They were in there fixing damage, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we saw more damage coming. Those guys got the binoculars out to see if their fenders are rubbing on all their cars. It's like Martinsville out there. It's Alex Bowman and Kyle Larson making up row one. Then Jimmy Johnson, Eric Almirola in row two. There's a lot of hungry people in the front needing wins. Guys looking for wins. Bowman on the inside, Larson on the outside. Back up through the gears they go and row four and five separating. Now they're three wide as they go into one. Bowman with a great restart on the inside, but he's not able to completely clear the 42. He's getting a little help now from the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. But he did a great job of blocking Jimmy Johnson, not giving him the inside lane. That made Jimmy just push him, and that got him in the lead. And Alex Bowman searching for that win here in the 88 car. And, and Junior, you know this all too well. Their sponsor's leaving. So now he's got a situation where he's trying to Say, hey guys, I'm a great race car driver. I know I can win in this equipment. I know we can keep sponsors, but I've got to go out and prove that. Yeah, he knows he can win. His team, oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh. That's the same move we saw the 22 pull on the 18. He did it again. He gained almost... a spot, and right behind him, a couple positions. How about William Byron in that dark blue and red car? He had struggled, lost multiple spots on two restarts when he was up front. Now he's the first car on fresh tires, trying to make them work. Goes all the way to the middle, third lane. Middle, middle. Trying to take advantage of it. That's the lane you need to be in. That's the lane you track these guys down. Six car in the fence back there. Ryan Newman in the fence off of turn two. Ryan Newman in the outside wall. And so bumpy through three and four. That is amazing how much those cars are moving around. Oh, Kyle Busch almost lost it off of turn four. Gathers it up. Look at all the momentum he lost. Oh, Bush is at an eventful day. Look at the 12 car Bikini getting so loose right there, man, but not lifting. Driving that car. Here comes a big run by the 18. He's going to put the bumper to the back of the 12. Giving Ryan Blaney a little shove. Man, look at that. Look at that racing. Look at all the over the racetrack. Yeah, that 12 car. He is. The back of that car is all over the place. Three is locking to 37. Hold it for like 37. Of Back up front. Three wide ahead of you. On him. Close battle for the lead. Alex Bowman, you mentioned it. Looking for a new partner on that car next year. A win is going to help that cause. It's going to help his cause. He's been putting this car. Everybody believes in him over at HMS. His owner, Rick Hendrick, believes in him. You mentioned the cause for a partner. How about a cause for the company? I know Chess Elliott won at Talladega, but this company is built on championships. It's built on winning. It is not accustomed to having a year like they're having. So much success at Penske and Joe Gibbs. You want to be Alex Bowman or Jimmy Johnson. Deliver that trophy to Rick Hendrick. And guys, I think when your peers praise you, it must mean even more. Because when Brad Keselowski passed Bowman for the win late at Kansas, he said, you know, in his post-race interview, Bowman is going to win a race soon. So he has a lot of respect for that driver, the 88. Yeah, he's smooth. Great qualifier. Always gets real great speed. And he's going to get everything he can out of the car. You never question his ability to make the car run everything it can run in a lap. Top three trying to separate themselves here as Bowman, Johnson, and Larson have pulled away from Logano. Yeah, he's got some tough competition behind him. He's got a very hungry Jimmy Johnson who knows all the tricks. And then he's got a guy who's great at this racetrack. I wonder. Larson. The 18 and the 19 have been so good all year, yet the 48 and the 88 looked good in practice. What was going to matter, it appears to me that practice is showing up. The cars that were good in practice, we mentioned Kyle Busch. He's having a heck of a day. Look at this save right here. Ooh, he's inside his teammate. Eric Jones gets a little loose right there. Ooh. Outside, outside straight. He's got guys on the outside of him, guys on the inside of him. That is, that is uh, that's a lot of skill and a little bit of luck. Right here, that thing is all the way around. When he comes and corrects it, he's lucky the guy that, that Blaney was behind him and didn't clip him. Busy day. Parker. 
And guys, you see Alex, what he's done to get to the lead has been very impressive, but it's even more impressive because of how loose he has been in that car all day. He keeps coming across the radio and saying, too free, too free. And finally, on the last stop, he said, you know what? I'm okay with it. And that's something, actually, with this package that a lot of drivers are learning. I learned it myself driving this year, and that is you have to be comfortable with these cars being free when they're in clean air, maybe being freer than you want so that you can run in traffic. And that is what he is doing inside the 88. And Junior and Jeff, you guys can kind of explain that a little further. But before you do, just a quick update on the 48 behind him. You saw that connect that contact he had with the 17 and the 20. Well, that left side rub that was there, they said it was at the 12 o'clock mark, but it's gone away, so it's good news for the 48 smooth sailing. But back to 88, about being loose in clean air and being able to use that in traffic. It's a tough thing, but the 88 has mastered it. You definitely don't want to be tight. You don't want to be tight. If you're tight, you're out of the gas, waiting on the throttle. Guys are driving around you, and that makes it even more tighter in dirty air. So loose is fast, that's what they always say. And when you get out front, you got the best air of anybody in the field. We well, got bow ties up front, Ford's right here. And how about that right there, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse entering the picture, fighting to get in the top five. We go NASCAR nonstop. at a couple fours running here. Eric Almarola in the 10 and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 17. That's a fight right now for the sixth place. Stenhouse trying to figure out a way to get around this 10 car. Seems a little quicker here. Having a great run for Ricky. His teammate Newman's had a pretty solid season at this point. Ricky seems to be getting a push here to be more competitive. Dave. Eric Almarola restarted fourth, and he said before that, you made the car better. As soon as he got going, it's loose now, and I don't know why. And then long, not long after that, five laps later, it's tight again. So he went from fourth, he's back to sixth now, and in the clutches of the 17 of Stenhouse, Parker. And Dave, it's a similar story for the 17 of Stenhouse. He's got no front grip and no lateral grip. That's not a good situation to be in. This is a great run, Junior, as you said. But when you look at the points as they run right now, he's 54 behind the cutoff line in the playoffs, which Brian Patty said is where they're going to have to throw a Hail Mary at Daytona, Marty. 
17 laps into this run Parker Kyle Larson sitting in the third position you're watching him on the right hand side of your screen still watching that Stenhouse Almirola battle on the left a moment ago they told Kyle Larson hey everybody behind you starting to go to the wall Kyle Larson yes Kyle Larson on the radio said I'm not ready to go to the wall yet I didn't think I'd hear those words from Kyle Larson Kelly well, William Byron once again on the move forward. Remember, his tires are 10 laps fresher than those around him. And Chad Knauss has been coaching him the whole way. They fixed some damage they sustained on a restart. He said, hey, we've got fresh tires. We've got straight body panels. Go out there and turn some quick laps. And William Byron has responded. Something interesting about tires. You know, normally they fire off. You make a bunch of gains, and then they kind of equalize. It seems like... Uh, whether it's this tire combination or this aero combination, William Byron is using those tires and they're continuing to help him. You see on the left side of your screen, 10 lap fresher tires than the cars in front of him. And he's slowly reeling down Logano and Larson. I think if you can get close enough, Dale, then you get the aero help and you kind of tow up to him and try to make a pass. Another guy we haven't talked about a ton today, Brad Kozlowski starting to creep into the mix here. Towing Truex Jr. up here to battle with Eric Almirola. And don't Watch lie. Yeah. When he was that high, you had a smile on your face a, a mile wide. You don't usually see Brad run the fence, but he's been working that fence a lot here lately. <laughs> and he's a guy that I picked to run really well today, and I'm glad to see him moving toward the front. Marty? And Jr., I think they agree with you when it was 90-plus degrees outside, but it's cooled down dramatically, and you can feel it here on pit road getting cooler as it starts to turn tonight here in Chicagoland. Maybe that's helping Keselowski, but boy, he was stuck in the back earlier on. Couldn't get his way out of 16th. Here he is right now passing for 7th. Brad Keselowski finally on the move. Yeah, it's tough to figure out how to get through that lap traffic. You see all these guys back there struggling to find their way toward the front. Trix Jr. still trying to find his way to the front. Eric Jones having a great run here in 10th. He is having a good run. The problem is all the guys he's around in points had really good stage finishes. So, you know, he came in here, you know, fighting with Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman, Larson Byron. You know, he came in 17th in points. As they run now, he's 18th in points. Even though he's running 10th, he just has not been able to get the stage points. A lot of the guys he's racing that guy. Top 10 run right now for Eric Jones. We sat down with him this weekend. Told us a story. He lost his father just a couple years back, who was really his his rock, his stone. And he said something to us that really surprised us a little bit because we didn't think about it as much. But he said he had to take on so much more with his career because his dad always took care of everything that revolved around racing. His dad was making sure of the next car that he was going to get in or the, the next track that he was going to go to. But when he lost his dad, he lost his rock that he could talk to, but he also lost almost that business manager that was helping his career as well. So it was a difficult situation, not only losing your father, but also losing somebody very important to your career. Yeah, think about it, Rick. He's in a situation now where he's trying to keep his job. He's trying to negotiate a new contract. Had to do a lot of that himself. Well, remember, we're going to Daytona next week, and who won that race last year? Eric Jones. So Eric Jones. that's a place where he's a really good racer, really understands plate racing pretty well, so I'm sure he's excited to get back there. Guy's grown up fast. He's a great kid. Tell Got you what, he's made some moves. Got by Truex yeah. a little while ago, and now he's making a move on Amarola. We've seen how difficult it is to pass. He tries to work that inside line, trying to get by the 10 of Almarola. He's cleared him. His car is getting around the bottom of the racetrack. These other guys are using the top, trying to use momentum, and he's still passing. We want to talk about a car that's getting around the bottom of the racetrack. The 88 of Alex Bowman has done something that no one else has done today, and that is break the, away from the pack. He is up to a two-second lead on Jimmy Johnson. We wondered how good Kevin Harvick was. He led 128 laps. Well, Alex Bowman's only led 31, but at over two seconds, this is hands down the largest lead we have seen today. When does he have to come to pit road, Steve? He was last on pit road at lap 163, so he's had about 30, trying to do the math here quickly, 38 laps. Uh, he'll have to come in the next 15, 20 laps? I expect him to come in the next 15 or 20. The pit window should open in the next six, so he could come that early, but I expect them to run a little bit longer. Marty? I was going to have that conversation with you, Steve. Battles all over the racetrack, but the crew chief's starting to work the calculator here. So when would you come? You could put that last window 15 laps from now would make that an equal distance, 50 in each, each segment here. But we have a little bit of caution. Tires do matter here, so would you lean to the early side of that window, Steve, and come maybe in about 10 laps or so, or would you wait till 50 to go? 
Well, if I'm Alex Bowman, I wait. I wait until someone forces me into a strategy. That's what that lead helps him. He now commands the race. But if I'm, say, Logano or somebody back there, force the hand, come to pit road. We'll see it all here in NASCAR nonstop. Twenty six year old Alex Bowman leading the Camping World 400 from Chicagoland Speedway as a three point three second lead over now Kyle Larson who's running second you saw it all in NASCAR nonstop Jimmy Johnson running in the third spot choosing the low line now trying to gain back that ground that he lost on Kyle Larson. This is a this is the point in the run deep into this tire run where Larson shines at this racetrack where that top really becomes more effective and it's harder to run the bottom as the tires are losing grip. And Junior, I think it's been an outstanding day for Kyle Larson and this 42 team led by Chad Johnson. Remember they came in today just plus 18 above that cut line. As it sits right now, they are plus 36. It may not be the win, but this is exactly what Kyle Larson needed. He told me we must start building consistency, even if they don't win. Jeff, I think this is a, just the day the 42 team needed. Yeah, this is a racetrack they expect to run well. Kyle Larson seems to always run well here, and they needed to turn it around. This is a place where they can execute on that. You look at the top three, the running order right now. These three drivers, 270 starts since any of their last wins which Alec Bowman still hasn't got a win so 133 starts for him without one but Kyle Larson and Jimmy Johnson still continuing to search for that first win here in 2019. And Larson only has one top five in 2019 so not the year they were expecting but Eric Jones going by Ricky Stenhouse for seventh position. Guys, with 56 to go, we talked that it has to be another pit stop. And we've seen you know, multiple issues on pit road. This is not an easy pit road to get on. We watched practice, Dale. Guys were missing pit road, almost spinning out coming to pit road. So while Alex Bowman's doing a nice job of pulling off to a comfortable three-second lead, 
I think it's going to be anything but comfortable through this cycle of pit stops. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you think about that, but you also have a rash of speed and penalties at this racetrack. Over the last three years, we have 27 in total. So this is a track that if you're not careful, you can make a lot of mistakes on pit road. The reason pit road is so hard to get into here is because you can't see it. The visibility isn't very good. You don't see the entrance of pit road until you're right on it. So you start trying to slow down when you see the entrance, you're way too late. You have to guess when to start slowing down. We see a lot of people get way too aggressive and just not make the commitment line. Steve drivers like Eric Jones, who right now is running seventh. He's nine and a half seconds behind Alex Bowman. Would he want to start that run to pit road? Maybe do a, a short pit here and get in a little earlier now that he knows he can get to the end? Well, this is the trouble when you when you get behind when it comes to points in the playoff picture. I'd love to tell you, yes, he should gamble, but the concern is he's currently 15 points out. Are they thinking they can make the playoff on points, or do they have to make it on a win? If they think it's a win, they need to be one of the first cars to pit road. If they're just a, if they're just enjoying a good run and gobbling up these points, then I think you have to be a little conservative. I mean, you look at the playoff points, right? The guys up front look good, but down towards the bottom, you see the guys in red. Eric Jones, minus 15. The 14 car of Clint Boyer is in the garage. I don't think he can afford to gamble. I think he has to take today as a good run, brings him closer, Daytona coming next week. Yep. And Steve, Steve, here's the thing. Here's what they're all worried about. Clint Boyer came into this race 12th in points, and he's 16th right now. So you can fall very, very quickly, and you just mentioned Daytona. How many times have we seen a lot of wrecks at Daytona? You can lose a lot of points. So on a day that you have them, you better execute and get them. Well, the 22, he, he's the guy because he's in green, because he's in. He's currently running fourth. In my mind, he's the guy driving this pit strategy. I think Joey Logano has nothing to lose but to gain more points. This is the beauty of this system. To really manipulate the system, be the aggressor. Be the first one on pit road. I'd like to see Joey Logano be the first one. And the reason we see the 88 right now in seventh, because the other six up in front have all won. But because Alex Bowman is leading, that's why he's moved up to seventh. On the points list right now, he's 10th. Looking at the lap times, Kyle Larson ran faster than our leader, quite a bit faster. Ran a 31.49 to a 31.79 on Bowman's car. Larson using that high line late in the run. A little too, too little too late, though. Not going to be able to eat into Larson's two and a half second lead. Kelly. Kelly. And you can see there Ryan Newman making a pit stop. Could be his last. He came in one point above the playoff cut line. But as a running and with Jimmy Johnson running so well, he's now showing 24 points below that line, Marty. Kelly, I'm starting to wonder if uh, Steve Letard has a direct line to Todd Gordon. It's almost immediately after you said that, Steve, the 22 has nothing to lose. Joey Logano coming to pit road, so the car's a little bit too free. He also picked a vibration up at the end of that run, so the first of the leaders pitting from the top five, Joey Logano comes in with 49 to go. Kyle Larson answers that call, Chad Johnson bringing him to pit road, and they have gained 18 points throughout the day. Kyle Larson coming down pit road right now from the top three, so the car's been a little bit too free, but doesn't want to make any big swings at it either. Four Goodyear tires, also on pit road, Martin Truex Jr., Kelly. And he was a bit frustrated, Marty, after he lost a bunch of sp uh, spots on that last restart. Now he says the 19 car is building a little bit tight in that last run. Four Goodyear tires, Sunoco Fuel. Eric Almirola lost seven spots on that last run in the 10 car, so they're going to take one swing at it. The right rear is where he wants them to go to work the most. Air pressure adjustment for Eric Almirola. And now the 88 of Alex Bowman pits out of the lead. It's four Goodyear tires, Snooko Fuel going for his first in. This is where you cannot make mistakes, Kelly. His teammate William Byron is also in. He said that his car was getting a little bit tight and he needs a little more front turn and an air pressure adjustment, Marty. We bragged on Brad Keselowski gaining some spots here. So the car is just a little bit too free in. Cooling down here in Chicago. They hope that helps the two car, but a bit of a long stop here on the final stop of the day, likely. I like your thinking, Marty. Does that mean that there's not going to be any more cautions? Daniel Hemrick also coming on to pit road now in the eight. 
And the 88 had service. Why we're looking at the 88 is we want to see how far behind him the 42 is. So if he pan back just a little bit, we're going to see he still holds about a, what, 30 car length lead. So not the three seconds he had, but Kyle Larson did gobble up a little bit. Now it's 47 to go. We're going to see what kind of run the 88 can make. Kyle was making time on that high side. Now with both cars having new tires, both guys running the bottom, can he continue to eat into that lead? Dave. Chase Elliott's hitting pit road now. That car definitely at the start of the run was not where Chase wanted it. Didn't make up any positions for quite a while, but as soon as about the halfway point of that run went through, the car started to come around a little bit, made up three positions, back to 16th from the last pit stop. The car came down to the hose. That's why he lost all the track position after being so good the run before. And Ricky Stenhouse had gained the lead there through pit stop cycles. He'll come down four tires and fuel it also just lacking front grip. You see the adjustment in the rear window there for the 17 in a top 10 run. Kyle Larson was two tenths faster that last lap on Alex Bowman. Keep your eye on that lap time. Because as this cycles through, those guys will be in the lead. Battling for the lead. Yeah, right now, Kevin Harvick has the lead. He was last on pit road at lap 173, so a little bit later than everybody else that has been making their pit stops here. This is tough right here. Traffic, that lap traffic is going to cost that 42 car. Got to be able to no na navigate that as good as you can. Obviously, nothing to do in that situation. He could have done better. This last lap, though, he was a tenth slower than Bowman. Marty. And remember, Kevin Harvick, as Rick pointed out a moment ago, did pit four laps later because they had that issue. Came to pit road. Harvick is running out front in the lead. Steve, I, I kind of agree with this call to Rodney Childers. When they put on tires earlier, he restarted 20th. He made it up to 15th, but they're going to give up the ghost. They can't go any longer. They're going to come to pit road here right now. But you can't fault Rodney Childers for at least trying to wait for a caution here. Yeah, I mean, it's a slim gamble. He's in the casino. He's put all his chips on green zero. He didn't bet to pick a bunch of numbers. He had one number and hoped it hit. It didn't hit. If he comes to pit road with no yellow, he'll be regulated back into the pack. But Kyle Larson, you know, there's a point in every race, Junior, where the crew chief kind of sits back and says, OK, drivers, it's up to you guys. You're going to have to go out there and show us what you have. And I'm impressed. I was concerned about Alex Bowman because that 42 chunked a second and a half off very quickly. But Alex Bowman rang the bell and kind of stretched it back away, Marty. And here comes Kevin Harvick down pit road, as we mentioned, four tires and adjustments. This team leading today, 132 laps. It's one they're going to walk away from and wish they had back. Maybe they had a clearly a quick car and need to put together an entire race so to make it the victory lane, Parker. And as we watch Alex Bowman to take the lead there from Harvick through the pit cycles, the team has been updating them exactly what Larson is doing behind him. And before they just went through that last pit cycle, they told them how Larson was running the wall. But they felt like Larson was maybe burning off the right front tire a little bit more. So they're just giving him all the info they can as he has that 2.3 second lead right now. He does have that 2.7 second lead, and he's driving away from Larson. But this happened at the beginning of this last run also on tires. Bowman was exceptionally fast. Larson was better on a long run. So let's see if this run can go long enough for that to swap again and for Larson to be the fastest. But right now, Larson has a quite a bit of speed off of Bowman. I mean, did, did, am I am I a year ago? Did I yes. forget where I'm at? I mean, I feel like I'm sitting here a year ago watching Kyle Larson run down the leader. Remember how that went? Lap traffic, he caught him quick, and then the famous move between him and Kyle Bush. Yeah, but he lost four tenths to Kyle or took Bowman that last lap. He was a lot further back a year ago as well. So maybe not as much distance that he has to close to fight for the lead and possibly the win here at Chicagoland as we go NASCAR nonstop.
there is going to be plenty to talk about tomorrow on NASCAR America. I know DJ, Jeff, Steve, you guys will get together and, and hash out what took place. And do you guys flip a coin as to who's going to host? How do you, how do you determine who's going to be the host? Steve, three weeks? Three, yeah, I think yeah. three weeks. Three weeks. I'm going to tell you, I'm wondering if we have seen the turning point of this race yet, if it's still to come, Jeff. Well, every week we talk about the turning point, where, where did things go right and where they go wrong. And with 34 left to go, it'll be interesting to see if we get that late race caution, who can have the good pit stop, who can have the great restart. But this battle for second is heating up. Joe Logano has run Larson down. Yeah, if we don't have it yellow, these guys aren't catching the leader, but they are having to battle themselves develop. Is Joey Logano going to play Larson from last year as he's trying to get by Kevin Harvick with a few laps to go? Marty. Yeah, a slide job part two might be Joey Logano as he looks underneath Kyle Larson here if he's going to get up to Alex Bowman. Kyle Larson came on the radio said, I'm just too free right here. He's been building tight most runs, but too free right now. Well, I think he is building tight because his lap times has got, have gotten better. Uh, Larson's running 20s, he's running 30s. Before he was running 40s and 50s. So Larson's car, I think, is starting to get a little bit better for him. Yeah, you can see he's getting everything he can there out off the turn four. That 22 looks a little faster right now. One of the dominant cars of the year has had a little bit of a rough go with the 18 of Kyle Busch. And we took a peek at his onboard camera, and I, I'm shocked. You look in the back window. I mean, the smoke is pouring out of the inside of that car. I'm not sure. I mean, look what he's trying to deal with right there. That is amazing. Hey, Steve. Yes. They, they believe they've got rubber buildup inside that race car. At first, Kyle came on the radio and he said, I smell something, but I can't tell what it is. And he said, it's definitely tire. And there have been so many marbles that have been collected under there. They believe that that's what he's dealing with. Now, when he comes down pit road, there will be a fire back there. And really, the only way to put it out is to go back out and run. Even, I mean, it's burning now, but it'll burn worse when he stops on pit road in about two laps. Well, let's listen to what the 18 has to say. I think we're going to have one hell of a fire when I stop on pit road here, boys. I think it's in the right rear crush panel, like right atop of the exhaust. You guys see this? Yeah, we can see it on the car. Wow. That's pretty scary because he's right. When he comes to a stop, that fire is going to ignite. The, the movement of the car and the air and the wind is keeping keeping that fire somewhat at, at bay. It's a big fire. There's something seriously on fire right there. A lot. Come on down this time. Get it worse. Coming out back. I don't even know I can see. Yeah. When we get the right rear off, reach up in there and see if you can pull the rubber out. It's really bad. He can't even see. What he's talking about is the rubber is like on top of the exhaust pipes or something like that, and it's actually sitting there burning. What about breathing? right now. How difficult is that for Kyle Busch? Not good. Well, Jeff, you did that piece, the Ever Wonder piece, about the AC and the filter and the carbon monoxide filter. This is... Let's keep an eye on it. Let's keep an eye on it. See what happens when he comes to a stop. He's going to have to be coming around the 95 again. Dave. Around the 95. Here he is. The thing is, Matt Benedetto was on the same plan in the 95. They're taking a little long time to get the four tires on. They're going to let Kyle come by, and then they will leave in the 95 car. Matt Benedetto. Now, for Kyle's team, reaching in there is a hot prospect. Doesn't look like it's too bad, so they're going to go around to the left side, and it's not as bad as it could have been. Not today, Kyle Martin or Kyle Busch was looking for. One of the dominant of the season, he and Martin Truex Jr. Don't push it here. Carry, carry. All right. Yeah, I guess the only concern now is if if it doesn't go out, just him breathing those fumes. You yeah. know, what is that going to do to him physically? And while Kyle Busch comes back out on the racetrack, Joey Logano has closed the gap again on Kyle Larson. Take a look at this replay of these two guys just a moment ago. He tries to drive down in there and get to the back of that 22 to disrupt the car, but it actually upsets his own car. Gets tight across the bumps, loses a lot of momentum there, has to get out of the gas. And look now, at that. Look at the gap that created. Yeah. But it shows you how much faster he is. He ran him right back down. Supported to stay in the throttle with this the way these cars, the way the rules are. Even on, especially on restarts, any kind of lift on a restart is multiple positions. 
We just saw what happened to the 22. I'm telling you, the 88 of Alex Bowman has to pick in his lanes very carefully here. If you get behind the wrong lap car, lose the nose, and you breathe, we've seen that penalty be gigantic, a second or more. So it may seem like he has a larger lead. It can vanish quickly with this rules situation. Yeah, just like right here, he tries to go to the bottom behind the 21. That's going to cost him. Look, he loses the nose. This could be a bad lap for him. This could be a half a second or more that he's going to lose. Look at the time he's stuck behind this guy. He's trying to get his momentum back up. The cars behind him are catching him. You said it, Steve. He's got to, you know, it's like a chess match. He's got to be thinking ahead all the time about where these guys are running. He's talking to a spotter. Hey, tell him to run here. Tell him to run there. Where are they going to go? Help me out. Paul Menard's the last, he, he's the last car on the lead lap. So Paul Menard's not just going to move over and let it go. He's kind of trying to stay in the lead lap. Run a 32.20 to a 31, 31.44 right there. Cost him a lot of time. And that's why. Caught the 21 at the bottom, losing the nose seven tenths of a second. Basically 30% of his lead erased, Parker. And you'd think he'd be yelling on the radio, as you said, Junior, but he has been absolutely quiet for about the last 50 laps, just completely focused. And you know, going for your first win, it's so nerve-wracking. You just want to focus. You want to do all the right things. But you absolutely need to pick the right decisions that are going through traffic, which you didn't there. Yeah, he just, you got to guess sometimes. But also, you kind of have to watch ahead to oh. see if those guys have any kind of habits if they're running the bottom. Now he's trying to run lines that he's not ran in a long time. You saw the issue there. Didn't get through turn one and two very well to run that high side because he hasn't been up there all that much. Yeah, Jeff, you mentioned it, right? The 21 is not going to pull over. He is racing to be the last car on the lead lap. And as he battles, Alex Bowman loses another three-tenths of a second off his lead. Parker. I may have spoken too soon because he just came on the radio and said, get the 21 off expletive, the bottom, of course. So he's definitely upset with that 21 right oh, now. Oh, back to the he bottom again. again. More trouble, more difficulty with the arrow, more time lost. He's got to do what he, he had started doing and entering high, enter the corner high, just like that. He may, needs to enter even higher. The gap to the lead is now under two seconds. He ran a 31.81 there to a 31.45. Well, there they are. What's two seconds, right? What's two seconds? What's that mean to the fan at home? That's what that means. Only about a third of a straightaway. He's, they have closed it in dramatically. He's going to clear the 21 now, though. He's able to get by Paul Menard. And so Alex Bowman now will have a little bit more cleaner racetrack in front of him. But that means Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, they've got to fight their way past these guys as well. And they're about to fight each other still, which is going to cost them a little time if they do any kind of side drafting. We'll see if Bowman can get back into a rhythm here. Bowman has been in this position before. I think back to Phoenix when he was actually filling in for you, Dale Jr., and looking so impressive. But then it was a late restart that ended up maybe taking the win away, maybe his first win ever away from him. Could the same thing be in the back of his mind right now? Two no ten. cautions. Two tenths slower that lap. The lead is now 1.39 seconds. He has to sort of figure out a way to balance this out, stop them guys from gaining. They're going to catch this lap traffic. That's going to cost them a little bit of time, Jeff. Well, let's see right now what Alex Bowman lap time can be. Let's see if he has gathered it back up. He just ran a 75. Let's see what this lap time is. 62, so he found a tenth. Larson ran a 62, Logano ran a 77, but we know that Larson's car gets better as the run goes, so he's got to hope that Menard holds him up a little bit, and he's going right by Menard. That's a great point, Jeff. We wondered if Bowman would drive away. Here you see this uh, action from Kansas, where he gets ran down by Brad Keselowski late in the race. Probably chose the wrong line there, didn't defend very well. Gave up the win, learned a lesson, though. Three second place finishes already for Alex Bowman knocking on the door that, of that first win. That lap right there, they ran the same speed. Bowman and Larson were the same. The same is okay for Bowman. It's okay with 18 to go, but again, I'm just concerned for Bowman that Larson's car gets better as he goes. He gets that top working and finds a lot of speed, and we saw him eating Bowman's lead up before this last pit stop. Exactly. Does so Bowman have a big enough lead right now? for when that happens. So what he has to do is everything perfectly as he catches, like right there, he ran Ooh. a 72, Larson ran a 46. That's not going to work with this many laps left. 17 to go, Alex Bowman out front. Hasn't run the high line hardly at all. Alex Bowman would have to run the high line to block Kyle Larson if he does get up to his back bumper. And now Larson and Bowman on the bottom of the racetrack. Parker. And guys, how do you know a driver's nervous when they're asking how many
three laps to go, which he just did on the radio. They updated him to the gap of Larson, which is now under a second that last lap. Well, when you start asking, Parker, when you start asking how many laps there are to go, it's because you are not happy with your car. Look here in front of Alex Bowman. Lap cars, more lap cars to try to pass. Well, and the eight's not really a lap car. He's the last car in the lead lap, so the 43, very respectful off the bottom. Daniel Hemrick, I think he might fight like Paul Menard did. That's going to make it tough on the 88. The lead is now under a second. Right there, they ran the same speed. Larson just a little bit quicker, not much. But here he is, Steve. This is what you talked about. Alex Bowman wants her on the bottom, lost tight. his nose badly there. Big Look at tight. the run Larson's going to have. Larson ran through the middle of one and two there. He may be starting to think about moving that line up. So Larson's strength is where the other cars aren't running. Larson's running the top. Every time Bowman gets in trouble is when he wants to run the bottom to get by people. He got loose and shot straight up the racetrack right in front of the 43, but he was able to get by him. Now he sets his sights on the eight to try to get by Daniel Hemrick. And where is the eight running? The eight's running the bottom. That's the thing he does not want to see. You run the bottom at all, Lily. All right, the 42 ran the top there and one and two. Big run down the back straightaway. His team, Bowman's team needs to be telling him about this. Where is Larson running? Is he gaining on you? Physically, you can see he gained right there. I would be telling that driver in the lead, hey, you might want to think about changing your line. The guy's coming. Bowman, now, just 14, now 13 laps to go. A tenth of a second quicker again for Larson. Larson's going to that top. Again, I just think that it's a huge disadvantage that Hemrick's running the bottom. That's exactly where Bowman wants to be. Big run down the back straightaway by Larson. He's going to try to top in three and four here. Can he keep the momentum up? All up along the wall. Bowman goes up to the wall as he comes out of four. A huge run now for the 42 of Kyle Larson. He just told him. He just told him. Don't mess around. Go to the top. There he goes. Trying to take the line away. He's trying to take away his line. And they're listening to each other. You heard that conversation. He's going to mirror drive you. They heard that rel relay to Alex Bowman. And they related straight to Larson. Now Bowman goes low. So does Larson. Coming up on 11 laps to go. Yeah, Larson tried to run that bottom. He thought Bowman right go to the top in three and four. It cost Larson down the straightaway. He lost a little time. They're getting tight behind the 88. Two really slow cars coming up on the bottom. Bowman's forced to run the top. Little wiggle there out of the eight. Again, Hemrick trying to stay on the lead lap. He's running 19th. Larson's got to run the top, right? Sorry, Bowman's got to run the top, and he did. Larson a line down. Closing the gap still. It was four tenths of a second. Now when they cross the line, the gap between the two, 0.25 seconds. Marty, he's closing in. They've told him you can run either line. Do not follow the 88. Whatever you do, that was a message to Kyle Larson. Bowman had an issue right there in the middle of the corner, running the top. He's got to figure out a way to get around this eight car quick. That eight car in front of him is really making things difficult for him aerodynamically. I think Bowman figured that out just a little bit, though, in three and four. That seemed to be a little better corner at the top for him. I know Larson was a little better, but. Where does he go now? He's at the back of Hemrick. He goes high. He's going to try to get by him there. Larson following in his tire tracks just a little bit lower oh, as they man. go through one and two. That was so close to the wall. I don't think Bowman meant to get that close don't to the wall. He got a great run down the back straightaway. He's going to get around this lap car. Great job. Hemrick. Great job of Hemrick to, to get out of the way. You know, he ran the fast line he wanted, but as soon as Bowman oh. had a run on him, he let him have the lane. He went to the bottom there, though. This will be a good run for Larson down the straightaway. Larson's got the draft and the momentum. Eight laps to go. He's Here his, comes Larson. He's on his bumper now. He's going to the inside, side by side in one and two. Larson all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. Bowman up on the high side, side by side for the lead. Side draft. He's got a quarter pedal there. He's on him. Larson takes the lead away from Bowman. Can it be redemption for a year ago? Larson's car has just been better on these long runs. That trouble earlier the 88 had getting by lap traffic just allowed Larson to run him down, and now he's got a faster car. We'll see if Bowman wants to keep fighting. He's getting loose right there. Yeah. Boy, Bowman is loose. But he, being loose is better than being tight. 
He may be able to regroup here, try to put something together. Coming up on six laps to go, Kyle Larson with the addition of Kurt Busch to Chip Ganassi Racing, Kyle Larson has really gone to the second driver there, which is a big change for Kyle Larson. Now, under six laps to go, but Bowman putting pressure back on the 42 as he looks low. He's there. Can he stay on that corner panel off the corner? He's got it. He's got it. He's going to be on the side they hit. draft. Going down the back stretch. Contact made. Bowman trying to side draft. He takes the lead away as he goes to the bottom of the racetrack. Bowman's car is better on the bottom. You're clear. You're clear. Oh, man, they're both chasing the back of that car. These two guys are both really, really loose right here, driving with everything they've got. I'm so impressed with Alex Bowman. I thought it was over. I didn't think he had enough to come back at Kyle Larson. Now wisely taking the line away that he knows Larson wants. That's a boss move to be able to regroup, get it back together. Try to come back and pass a guy who really is dominant here. Larson around the top. And Bowman back to the bottom. That's where he wants to be, man. His car has been better there. Yeah, Bowman's got a good lead right here. Four to go. Way quicker that last. Larson trying to gain the momentum back. Tries to reel Bowman back in. Bowman taking away Larson's line, going to the high line again. High line in one and two, low line in three and four. Really smart driving by Alex Bowman, understanding having needing to do two different things on different ends of the racetrack. Alex Bowman is going to catch some lap traffic. 37 car, Chris Busher is in front of him. Busher is running the middle of one and two. It could be difficult. This late in the race, you really want Busher to work with you. Three to go. Where does Busher go down here in turn three? He's going to the top. Bowman wants that bottom. Worked out perfectly for Bowman, didn't it, Junior? Just as long as he doesn't get tight right here on the underneath him. He doesn't even get next to him, so that's pretty decent. Now he wants doesn't Busher lose. to go to the bottom. Yep. Two laps to go. You know, at 16 years old, Alex Bowman was in a USAC midget race accident at Las Vegas dirt track. He broke, broke both of his collarbones and all the ribs on his right side. He punctured collapsed his lungs he was in ICU for seven days says he doesn't remember any of the accident but the first question he asked the doctor was when can I get back on the racetrack well it's been 133 races in the Cup Series and now he comes up on one lap to go presented by Credit One Bank Alex Bowman looking for his first win in the Monster Energy Cup Series Alex Bowman has finished in every position in a Cup Series race, second through 43rd, but he's never finished first. Working his way through the final turn, Alex okay. Bowman will win at Chicago. Thank you guys so much. Damn, Greg Ives, you are the man. Nice job, buddy. Heck of a job. I'm proud of you. I'm the heck of a... Hey, I can see you. Proud of you. I'm fighting uh, back on the last few laps there. Very proud. That was a great job by Alex Bowman. I'm so impressed. It's Chicago Land's first time. We've had a first time winner. Alex Bowman wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series, getting his first career win. Big day for Alex, big day for Hendrick Motorsports. Maybe even a bigger day for Chevrolet in this Camaro. They've come a long way with this race car. This victory is fueled by Sedona. Fuel your best. That's what Alex Bowman was able to show us today. His I think I best. Got it stuck. <laughs> yep, it <laughs> rained a lot, Alex. That celebration may last a little bit longer now. Stuck in the grass. What an impressive run for Alex Bowman.
as he lost the lead to Kyle Larson. Looked as though Larson was going to drive away from him, but Jeff, you mentioned, so impressive to see this young man fight back and get that lead and then drive off and get his first win. Yeah, I love the regroup that he did. He just got himself in a position where he got his car in the best lanes it could possibly be and went back and took it from Larson. Hey, you want to win your first race, man. You had to go beat one of the very best. Let's go to Marty. Well, what an incredible day for Alex Bowman. You are standing here. How about that? You're standing here in front of these fans as a Cup Series winner. Did you dream this moment would ever happen, Alex? Uh, I mean, that's all I've wanted my whole life, you know? I feel like this is a lot of validation for a lot of people that said we couldn't do this. So, um, so proud of everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, Exalta, the Hendrick Engine Shop. My guys have worked so hard. Um, we struggled so bad last year in the beginning of this year. And, man, I had questions if uh, Mr. H was going to let me keep doing this. Everybody, all the rumor mills, but um, to be here winning a race in the Cup Series just means so much. Um, just couldn't do it without these guys. My pit crew is the best pit crew on pit road. And uh, this is all I've ever wanted. Kyle Larson got by you. I see you choking up there. How did you regroup and pass him for the win? I just tired of running second. I don't want to do that anymore. So, uh, you know, I feel like this is the last box aside from uh, going and chasing a championship that I needed personally for myself to val validate my career. Um, you know, I feel like obviously there's a lot more left to accomplish, but uh, this is always what I hear is you haven't won a race. So uh, I think even Chad said something about me not winning a race. So. Check and house. There we went and did it. Uh, everybody can stop giving me crap. We finally did it. We will see you in victory lane. You got a long way to go to get the flag, by the way, because you got stuck. I'm stuck. I'm, <laughs> I, I made a really bad life choice and came down here in the dirt and forgot about the rain today. So, um, yeah, I don't. They're gonna have to tow me out. It, like it's not going anywhere. So uh, I'm the dumb guy that won the race and got the car stuck in the mud. That's okay. Celebrate how you want, my man. Yeah, we bogged deep. <laughs> There you go, Alex Bowman, bogged into the mud and all. You know what? He deserves that checkered flag. I think we may bring it to him. Who knows? He's going to walk up to the fans and get it, Rick. How about that? I'm sure that this is one of the best walks he's ever taken in the Monster Energy Cup Series. He knows what he's about to grab. Coming up next will be Victory Lane Celebration. We'll have more interviews and some IMSA racing from Watkins Glen also coming up next on NBCSN. What a great walk right there. And great view, the emotions coming out. And the 26-year-old from Tucson, Arizona. Alex Bowman was another one of those drivers. It wasn't if he was going to get to victory lane, it was when he was going to get to victory lane. And it took a hard-fought battle, even a little bumping and banging along the way here at Chicagoland Speedway. Once Kyle Larson got by him, it didn't look good. But Alex Bowman said he was tired of finishing second. He doesn't want to do it anymore. So he went out and he took this win. He took it away from Kyle Larson. He earned his first Monster Energy Cup Series win. And the car is not stuck any longer in the grass. It's making its way to victory lane and a lot of crew members there congratulating Alex Bowman on his way to his first victory lane celebration. Now let's go to Kelly. And for the second year in a row, Kyle Larson, a part of an incredible finish here at Chicago Land. But Kyle, unfortunately, for the second year in a row, you come up just a little bit short. You had Alex at one point. What could you have done differently there at the end? Yeah, I could see him uh, struggle when I was getting to him. and. When I got by him, I was like, all right, good. You know, he's going to be in my dirty air and, and get loose. And um, he just, he could get big runs on me um, down the straightaways. And, and I think that allowed him to, to get that run into one. And then uh, he got to my inside and I got a little bit tight. I don't know if, you know, him getting air on my spoiler or something got me tight. But uh, I had to kind of breathe it a little bit. And um, then we side drafted on the back stretch. So I wish I would have 
maybe done some things different into three instead of going all the way to wall, maybe chase him to the bottom to try and hang on his quarter, but you know, he might have cleared me anyways down there. But um, yeah, I wish I could have got a win for McDonald's and, and got them in victory lane, but um, still a good day, a great day for Chevy and, and Hendrick Engines. That was that was really cool to see um, a lot of us Hendrick guys, Hendrick Engine guys, you know, up front and kind of drafting and breaking away from the, the groups behind us on the short runs. So um, I felt good about my car on the long runs. Um, you. If I was out in clean air, um, I think we just had a lot of downforce and drag in our car, so I just felt slow in clean air. But when I could get behind people, I was okay, and then could just you know wait until we got laps on tires, and I could start you know making ground. So um, was actually surprised I even got to him. I thought when he came out, you know, about the same distance off pit road in front of me, um, I thought you know, he was just going to check out. But um, you know, like I said, he was struggling, and uh, we were able to get to him and get by him, but. He did a good job. Uh, he did a good job regrouping and, and figuring out how to make his car drive better and uh, got the win. So cool to uh, see him get the win there. Um, would have liked for him to have to wait another week or so, but um, happy for him. Um, he's an open wheel guy, so cool to see. All right, runner up finish here for Kyle Larson. Parker? Hey, we're, in vic we're in victory lane here. Alex Bowman is on the phone with Rick Hendrick right now, calling to congratulate him. Here he comes out. The Gatorade shower, the confetti. You can see the elation of first win, hugs with the crew. Those guys were excellent on pit road. A hug with Greg Ives, crew chief. Alex, man, I gotta ask you, from driving for small teams at the fringe of the Cup Series to getting a part-time opportunity and filling in for Dale Jr. to now being a Cup Series winner for Rick Hendrick, put it in words. I can't, I can't believe it. Um, I mean, you know how it is. We were in the same boat and just had a different set of circumstances, and um, I can't believe it. I mean, there's so many people that are capable of doing this, but uh, so thankful that I got the opportunity. Um, big thanks to Exalta, Nationwide, Lumar, Valvoline, Chassis Shop. Everybody that makes this happen. Um, I didn't change anything from running 35th every week. I might work out a little harder and, and study a little harder, but didn't change much. And to go from uh, go from doing that to doing this is pretty incredible. What Rick say to you there? He said, "I can't believe you got us stuck in the mud." Which I can't believe I did that either. I feel pretty dumb, but um, I guess you'll have that in big time auto racing. I just tried to go bogging out there, and um, we needed some knobby tires to make that happen. And uh, Greg, how amazing was that pass by your young driver here on the 42 to get back by him? Yeah, I, I kind of knew that was going to happen. I, he, he wants to get me a little excited there at the end. And, you know, we, we were in a situation at Kansas where I think he learned a little bit of something that never give up even if the guy got behind, uh, you got behind the guy. So he did a great job. Appreciate everybody. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, all our sponsors, and I want to uh, dedicate this win to my mom. You can tell how excited everyone is here down here. Dave? Another strong intermediate track run for Joey Logano, but how would you describe what it took to get there today? <laughs> battle. <laughs> In one word, it was a battle out there. It's uh, crazy. Um, uh, the restarts are insane. Uh, you know, you're three, four wide cars are all over the place. And then, uh, you know, I thought we, um, you know, we, to start off the day, we were pretty far off uh, on the splitter pretty hard. And we tried making adjustments to fix that and got off too loose, we were too tight. And then we finally got the balance to where it was pretty good um, as the sun went down. and. Um, you know, had a good green flag cycle to where I, was, I caught the 42. I just couldn't get around him. I couldn't get to either side. I couldn't break that plane on his bumper to get to either side of him to try to make that pass. And um, and then I started getting tight. I was just racing so hard with him. And uh, he was able to take off. And, and, and that was kind of the, the end for us. But um, a great recovery. You know, we didn't score any stage points. We were running in 12th or 13th most of the race. And then uh, we got the Shell Penzo Mustang quite a bit better uh, to, to get a top three. So. Um, it's hard to say I'm happy with that, but all things considered, we'll take it. Battled to third. Kelly? Yeah, and a great day all around for Hendrick Motorsports. All four cars inside the top 11. A fourth place finish for Jimmy Johnson. You were out front for a little bit. What was the difference ultimately between you and your teammate who went to victory lane? Um, and just a, a solid performance for our ally team. Uh, really proud of everyone. Um, I just couldn't clear the four car when he was still on track in the car to beat, and I think he was probably the strongest car tonight. Um, the way some of those restarts unfolded, the 88 had a great opportunity with, with the draft and worked it very well and got to the lead. And once he had that control, there was really no taking it from him. So I'm uh, extremely happy for Hendrick Motorsports. Can't wait to see Alex and congratulate him. And then uh, this 48 team smiling. It's good, it's good night. All right, we'll let you go to victory lane. Thank you, Jimmy. Marty?
Brad Kozlowski still debriefing with Paul Wolf, and there is a lot of story in your day. It shows a fifth place finish, but man, almost winning stage one, being stuck back around 15th for most of the race. How did you come up and finish fifth? Yeah, yeah, Marty was uh, up and down day for the Miller Lite Ford, but uh, really climbed out of the, the hole there at the end, like you said. Uh, it's a good strategy, and we just seemed to keep adjusting on the car and got better towards the end of the race. Uh, I don't know if we were the best car. I actually think my teammate at the end was really strong, but. Uh, it uh, was still, like you said, a good recovery, but I'm uh, happy with that. I wish we would have won that first stage. I was right there, and I needed one more lap. You know, I think the car in front of me didn't have tires, and we did, and something happened, and the yellow came out before the stage. But uh, on all, like you said, a, a good day. I'm happy for Alex Bowman and that team. That they've uh, been really fast, and, uh, you know, if one of our Penske cars couldn't get it, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for him. But uh, all in all, uh, a solid uh, day, some things to work on and improve, and uh, we'll do just that. The teammate he mentioned was Ryan Blaney. All three Team Penske cars finish in the top six. Guys, I tell you what, <laughs> two races. Junior, you've uh, experienced a couple winners here. Yeah, I, I'm just so happy for Alex. You know, this, I, I've seen his, you know, the majority of his career up close, and just awesome to see him finally achieve his dream. Yeah, happy for Alex, happy for the fans. I think we yeah. saw some great racing, a great battle with Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman at the end. I was impressed with everything I saw. It's always great to see a first time winner. It's nothing like it, you win that first race. And you see all of the people coming to Victory Lane to congratulate Alex Bowman. Parker Kligerman put it perfectly. He had worked so hard in his career fighting on maybe smaller teams, underfunded teams, and he got an opportunity. He was a substitute for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Impressed Rick Hendrick to the point where he said, I've got to keep this kid as the driver of the 88. And he has worked diligently week in and week out to try to get the best finishes. And now today, his first ever win in Monster Energy Cup Series. Coming up next on NBCSN, it's IMSA Racing from Watkins Glen, the Weather Tech Championship. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.